The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Good morning. The Prime Minister says there's no magic bullet for inflation. But David says measures in the new budget will help. The opposition says it falls short, though. And the Prime Minister says the country has sustained $4.2 billion in hurricane damage since 2015. It's all straight ahead this morning. I'm Dwight Strawn, and this is Morning Blend. Wake up, wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day. Yeah, wake up, start of the start of the new way. You know that. Yeah. It's the start up. of the end of the old way Good morning again, Bahamas. It is Thursday, June 2nd, 2022. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Again, I'm Dwight Strawn. In a moment, Laverne Gardner will be joining us also this morning. Our Labor Week series continues, wraps up today with the Trade Union Congress and more details about the Labor Day March for tomorrow. And we'll be talking with the U.S. Embassy. It is June, and that means it's Pride Month, and the the embassy has a number of initiatives planned to uh, celebrate LGBTQ individuals in the country and in the world. We'll talk more about what they're doing this morning. But first, it's time for the overnight, the latest breaking news from while we're sleeping, and the top national and international headlines this morning. In the overnight, as he explained on his government's plans, expanded on his government's plans to assist Bahamians, given the rising cost of living, Prime Minister Philip Davis acknowledging that none of the initiatives are a magic bullet. Speaking during his contribution to the 2022-2023 budget debate, Prime Minister Davis saying that the measures reflect the belief that it's important to help Bahamians right now, despite the very serious fiscal restraints that the country faces. He says uh, they're not a magic bullet, the measures, but they are helping to move the country in the right direction. He said, quote, Bahamians understand that skyrocketing prices originate outside of the Bahamas, but that isn't the end of the story. Even as we help people during this short-term crisis, we can do more to plan for the medium and long term. In particular, he highlighted the need to increase the Bahamas' food security. As he noted, plans to invest substantially in the agriculture sector over the upcoming budget year. Meanwhile, the opposition saying that the budget misses the mark. East Grand Bahama MP Kwesi Thompson says that it falls woefully short. The former state minister for finance and based in the government's decision to increase the budget for travel and wages and salaries, but cut funding for social assistance benefits. He said, quote, what sense does it make to increase the amount for travel but decrease the amount for social assistance. He said a massive post-pandemic social need is here and remains, and that many families are still struggling due to the spike in inflation. The Prime Minister also highlighting that the country sustained $4.2 billion in hurricane damage since 2015. He noted that over the last seven years, as a result of a number of hurricanes, this has happened. In other news, 18 Bahamians of various backgrounds announced as recipients of the Queen's Birthday Honours. Leo Marvin Blaine Pinder receiving the Companion of the Most Distinguished Order of St. Michael and St. George for his services to politics and business. 
Palms Christian Council President Bishop Delton Fernandez is also being awarded uh, as a CMG for service to religion, while Churchill Tenor Knowles is being awarded as a CMG for services for sports in the community. Stephen Trevor Wright is being awarded the Order of the British Empire for services to business and community. And Pastor Francis Carey II is also being awarded the OBE for services to community. Four people are being awarded as member of the Order of the British Empire, including Bishop Walter Hanchel for services to religion and community, Pastor Samuel Maxwell Boodle for services to religion, Norwood Rudolph Ramming for services to business and religion, and Anne Presenti Russell for services to politics. Eight individuals being awarded the British Empire Medal, Juletta Joan Lloyd Charlton for services to education, Paula Patricia Sweeting for services to education, Bishop Lawrence Roll for services to religion and community. Chiron Elizabeth Strawn for services to business and community. Reverend Hensel Kenneth Adderley for services to religion. Reverend Basil Johnson for services to religion. And Carrie Mae Agatha Hunt for services to politics. Patricia Eva Penniman Bell for services to education and community. And Royal Bahamas Defense Force Deputy Commissioner Clayton Fernander supposed to be police force being awarded the Queen's Police Medal for service in the police force. Meanwhile, overseas, four days of celebrations honoring Queen Elizabeth II's 70th year or 70 years on the throne getting underway today with a display of British military traditions stretching from the days of horse and cannon to the jet age. Formal celebrations for the Platinum Jubilee began with Trooping the Color, an annual military review that has marked the Sovereign's official birthday since 1760. The Queen is expected to join the working members of her family on the balcony of Buckingham Palace at the end of the event, when 70 aircraft are set to roar ahead. The Jubilee is being commemorated with a four-day holiday weekend. The celebration of Elizabeth's reign includes a service of Thanksgiving Friday at St. Paul's Cathedral in London, a concert at Buckingham Palace on Saturday, and a pageant staged by thousands of performers drawn from schools and community groups around the country on Sunday afternoon. Throughout the weekend, neighborhood organizations and individuals are expected to hold thousands of street parties around the country, repeating a tradition that began with the Queen's coronation in 1953. The 96-year-old Queen is Britain's longest reigning monarch and the first to reach the milestone of seven decades on the throne. The Jubilee is giving many people, even those often indifferent to the monarchy, a chance to reflect on the state of the nation and the huge changes that have taken place during her reign. And the Turkish foreign minister has sent a letter to the United Nations formally requesting that his country now be referred to as Turkey A. That's going to the state-run news agency there. The move is seen as part of a push by Ankara to rebrand the country and disassociate itself from the bird, Turkey, and some negative connotations that are associated with it. The spokesman to UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres confirming receipt of the letter late on Wednesday. The agency quoting the spokesperson is saying that the name change has become effective from the moment the letter is received. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has been pressing for the internationally recognized name Turkey to be changed to Turkey, as it is spelled and pronounced in Turkish. The country called itself Turkey in 1923 after its declaration of independence. Turkey, call it Turkey. In sports, the Bahamas Senior Men's National Soccer Team will kick off its 2022 CONCACAF Nations League campaign with a home match against St. Vincent and the Grenadines at Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium tomorrow. That match gets underway at 5 p.m. as international soccer returns to the Bahamas. It'll be the first home game in this window, and the second is slated for June 10th against Nicaragua. There is also a road match against Trinidad and Tobago on Monday. Guardian Sports caught up with the team during practice on Tuesday night at Roscoe A.L. Davies' soccer field. Head coach and former national team player Nestle Jean 
saying the full team is there and ready to go. You can read about their comments in today's Guardian Sports section. And Bahamian multi-event athletes Ken Mullings and Kendrick Thompson have been going back and forth in the men's decathlon over the past three years, with each breaking the national record on multiple occasions, and they're both still relatively young in the sport. Thompson turned 25 this summer, just a few months younger than Mullings, who turned 25 in April. You can read about the back and forth in today's Guardian Sports section. And it's a big night for the NBA, the Golden State Warriors taking on the Boston Celtics in Game 1 of the championships tonight. That's sports, and that's the overnight. Time for your first look at weather. In your weather, as we say, I've been telling you, there's a lot happening and a lot that we need to be paying attention to with weather over the next few days. We've got a surface trough across the northwest Bahamas combined with tropical moisture streaming, streaming across the islands. And that's going to enhance, enhance shower activity in the northwest and central Bahamas. Boaters should be alert for the threat of water spouts and residents in low-lying and flood-prone areas should exercise caution for the possibility of flooding during heavy or prolonged rainfall events. For today, for the northwest and central Bahamas, we're looking at variably cloudy, warm, and humid conditions with a gradual increase in cloudiness. Scattered showers and thunderstorms by late morning, early afternoon. Some showers may become heavy and thunderstorms strong to severe at times. Expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds variable at 10 knots or less, becoming south to southwest at 10 to 15 knots by the afternoon in the northwest Bahamas. Southeast to south at 10 knots or less in the central Bahamas. Seas 3 feet or less building to 2 to 4 feet by the afternoon in the northwestern islands, but 1 to 3 feet in the central Bahamas. For the southeastern islands today, partly cloudy, hot, and humid with the chance of isolated showers and thunderstorms. Expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots, seas 2 to 4 feet. Temperature-wise, Today, we are looking at high temperatures getting up to around 88 Fahrenheit, 31 Celsius. Overnight lows tonight getting down at 73 Fahrenheit, 23 Celsius. Currently in Nassau, it's about 77 degrees under, par under partly cloudy skies. We're watching the tropics. We've got a lot to tell you about. That's coming up in your extended outlook after traffic in just a bit. Wake up, wake up, Wake up, it's a new day. Yeah, it's start of the start of the new way. It is time for a break, but when we come back, we're discussing the day's top stories right here on Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9, your home for fresh news and smart talk all day. Switch for better when you move your mortgage to Scotiabank. Leave behind that old mortgage plan and open the door to a low interest rate. No payments for up to two months and cash back of 2.5% of the mortgage amount up to US $10,000. And guess what? It gets better. Apply for your Scotiabank credit card and enjoy a low 9.99% introductory rate for the first six months. Switch for better and upgrade your mortgage today with Scotiabank. Offer ends June 30th, 2022. Uh -huh. Around the world, Cleveland Clinic is recognized as a leader in healthcare. Our team of experts relentlessly pursues the best for our patients. From groundbreaking cancer research to state of the art heart surgery, life saving innovations happen here every day. When it's time to travel for your health, it's time to travel to Cleveland Clinic. Your destination for care. For every care in the world. To learn more, visit clevelandclinic.org slash Caribbean. Thank you. 
Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Technology serves to make our lives better, so why not your business too? At Custom Computers, we've been maintaining our knowledge and relationships with top tech companies since 1987 and carry only the most trusted brands like Apple, Microsoft, HP, and more. No company has helped more businesses build reliable IT systems than Custom Computers. You name it, we've done it. Call 396-1101 to talk to any of our business experts. Find trust in your tech. Count on custom computers. Screws and Fasteners World, Balfour Avenue and Palm Beach Street, has those hard-to-find fasteners for you right now. You can find stainless steel regular hex, carriage bolts, galvanized bolts, threaded rods, nails, self-tap screws, sex bolts, anchor bolts, turnbuckles, masonry tools, hand tools, and weed whacker strings. Check out the rope selection and call body fasteners, too. Special orders are welcome. It's your number one fastener store. Screws and Fasteners World. Valfour Avenue and Palm Beach Streets. Call 326-1976. Switch for better when you move your mortgage to Scotiabank. Leave behind that old mortgage plan and open the door to a low interest rate. No payments for up to two months and cash back of 2.5% of the mortgage amount up to US $10,000. And guess what? It gets better. Apply for your Scotiabank credit card and enjoy a low 9.99% introductory rate for the first six months. Switch for better and upgrade your mortgage today with Scotia Bank. Offer ends June 30th, 2022. Welcome back to Morning Blood here on Guardian Radio 96.9. We're streaming live on GuardianTalkRadio.com and on the Guardian Radio app for smart devices. We're also on your televisions on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 and BTC Flow Channel 612. You can tweet us at MorningBlend969 or Facebook.com slash MorningBlend969. Text us 4224796. Once again, I'm Dwight Strawn. Join me now, Laverne Gardner. Laverne, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Doing well. How are you? How's Grand Bahama? Uh, Grand Bahama is, uh, is all right. We're okay. The yeah. sun's out a bit, so mm. we're good. Yeah. You ready for what may be coming over the next couple of days? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Right. That's the answer for everybody, actually. But sure, hopefully it'll just be a little bit of rain. Yes, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah. You know, we're, we're flat, so we're easily flooded here. That sounds like everywhere in the country, but yes. okay. But yeah. Everywhere in the Bahamas, Yes, right? seems so. Um, but anyway, we're, we're going to make it through it, I'm sure. All right. Um, coming up this morning, we've got a lot to talk about in the news. And um, in our 8 o'clock hour, this um, elicited a lot of reaction last year when they first did it. And they're doing it again, the U.S. Embassy flying the gay flag or the LGBTQ flag for the month of June for Pride Month. And they're going to be here again to tell us why. Um, uh, this morning, and we'll talk with some other, about some other things as well, hopefully. Then in the uh, 9 o'clock hour, Morning Glen Business, um, we're wrapping up Labor Week. This morning, we've got the Trade Union Congress. We've spoken to all the umbrella unions uh, this week, including the new one, and we'll get the TUC's perspective on that and other hot labor issues in the country this morning. And details about the Surrendal Fox Labor Day March for tomorrow. Is it going to happen with all this rain? We'll see. We'll see what they say. That's coming up. But um, let's begin with what else is in the news.
And in the news, just ahead of the big holiday weekend, Labor Day tomorrow and Whit Monday on Monday, um, we've got the latest COVID numbers, the th- May 31st dashboard. And um, I, I do believe this is the first time we've been in triple digits since it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, 90 cases in New Providence for May 31st, and uh, three on Grand Bahama, seven on Exuma, one in San Salvador for a total of 102. 102 cases. And um, hospitalizations, 14 in total. Three at Doctors Hospital, nine at Princess Margaret, and two at Grand Bahama Health Services. Nobody is in intensive care, but um, about five, well, no, three of the three people at Doctors Hospital are moderately ill, and, um, well, well, everybody is moderately ill. Okay, yeah, all of them, all 14. So just letting you know, just letting you know, you gotta, gotta, as they say, you gotta live with it, but just letting you know what's happening out there. Okay. Um, the big story is the budget debate, which kicked off yesterday. The Prime Minister talking about inflation and how this is a priority of this administration for this budget, trying to bring down the cost of living. But he says um, there's no magic bullet for it, and they're trying, and they're hoping the new measures will help. For more on what happened yesterday, take a listen to this report from our Jasmine Brown. The Prime Minister expanding on what his administration is doing to soften the financial blow brought on by record high prices. The necessities of life are too expensive for almost everyone. Food prices alone have gone up 20% since last year. The cost of everything keeps going up, but paychecks for those lucky enough to have work are not keeping pace. In recent months, residents have complained about being hit hard by rising prices. David says his administration is doing what it can, including putting a little more money in the pockets of Bahamians. The first priority of this budget was to put in place a package of measures to help Bahamians cope with inflation, (coughs) including multiple reductions in import duties, funding to increase enforcement of price controls, an increase in the minimum wage in the public sector with incremental increases beginning next month, the establishment of a contributory pension plan for public officers, the the reintroduction of RISE, a conditional cash, cash transfer program. Davis also pointing out that the government is reducing customs duties on nearly three dozen food items. The goal here is to include many of the most frequently consumed foods, like eggs, chicken parts, flour, cheese, and corn, and to make healthier foods less expensive too, including broccoli, carrots, spinach, cucumber, beans, and cabbage. The PM says the government has also included funding for new enforcement personnel at the Price Control Commission to ensure the savings are passed on to the consumer. The PM added that the government is making health care and home ownership more affordable and accessible, in addition to investing in agriculture to reduce the country's reliance on food imports. Reporting for Guardian News Network, I'm Jasmine Brown. All right, um, uh, so let's get your reaction to it. We, we talked about this a lot with the um, Economic Affairs Minister, Michael Akitas, last week. And um, by the way, did you see that, Laverne, um, when we asked about the chargers for the electric vehicles? Yes, I made said note was, of that. He said he was going to deal with it, and they did it. They did it. They dropped the, the Prime Minister talked about it uh, yesterday, that a question was asked. Yeah, you know who asked that question, right? Anyway, a question was asked about the charges, and because of that, they dropped it from 45 to 5%. So, hey, and that was from a texter who prompted me to ask the question. So, thank you to the texter for reminding us about it, and we asked, and, and, and ask, and you shall receive. Yes, I'm, I'm, so, uh, hey, that's, that's something. 
I'm giving credit to the tax time to Morning Blend for yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that's absolutely. that's the nation, the people of the of the country working together to get things yes. done. Yes. So yeah, um, but um, uh, so that's happening. The prime minister says um, it's a little something they can do, but um, the opposition is saying it's not enough. It's still falling short. Um, uh, Quasi Thompson, the former state minister for finance, blasting the government's decision to increase the travel budget and wages and salaries, but cut funding for social assistance benefits, saying that there's still tons of people struggling as a result of the pandemic, and um, and that that this is not the right time to cut funding for those folks. Um, he says also, quote, you also cut the amount allocated for uniform allowance by one million. Does that mean that we no longer have a need in our country for uniforms, for uniform assistance? And um, Thompson noting that in the fiscal strategy report, the government committed to spending no more than $2.6 billion in the upcoming budget and that the deficit would not exceed $415 million. But he says, quote, you are clearly unable to, or unwilling to meet your own spending and deficit targets as you ignore your own fiscal objectives without any reasonable cause in the law. In your fiscal strategy report, you told Parliament that in this budget you would not raise compensation to employees. You told Parliament you would begin to reduce salaries and wages allocations as part of an expenditure containment strategy. You ignore this and, contrary to your own report, have decided to raise compensation to employees by $56 million dollars. Regarding the government's revenue projections, Thompson called it pure fantasy. He said, quote, show us the data that forms the basis for your revenue projections. Tell us how you will collect $1.4 billion in VAT, $500 million more than last, without significant new tax measures. You told Parliament that this year you would begin to find $100 million in savings from state-owned enterprises. What is the government's plan to fulfill the commitment you made to the Bahamian public and to Parliament? What have you... What you have done is increase the allocations to state-owned enterprises. Clearly, your, your commitment to begin your reform of state-owned enterprises was only hot air. Uh, that's some serious uh, talk there from Quasi Thompson. Let's get your reaction to it, folks. Um, many people will say, yes, the cutting of the food duties, that's going to be great. I'll feel, I hopefully, if the stores, and Laverne, you were given a mandate last week, uh, to, to, to watch the prices over there in Grand Bahama, and hopefully we'll have some volunteers here in New Providence. But th- if, we, if those savings are passed on to consumers, that will be something you can feel. But what's happening in the background? And uh, will we pay for this next year or the year after? What does this Very mean? True. Especially if the salaries are going up in government a- uh, ministries and agencies. Yeah. Uh, you know, Dwight, the devil's in the details. And so um, this is what we said. We said initially when we heard the budget, the budget report, we would wait until they got into the meat of it so that we could really gain an understanding of what is happening, what isn't happening, and how it will impact us in the long run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's get. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I've always been like, How are we going to get all of this done? No new taxes, no increased taxes. How, what, what is this magic bullet? Yeah. And and that's an interesting way to put it too. No increased taxes, but some fees did go up and some were shuttled and shifted around. So some people are complaining about what they are now being. Is that sufficient though? Right. Is that sufficient? And will they be able to collect? It's like what I asked them. Senator, last, week Thursday, do they believe that the measures that they have in place are sufficient enough that they won't have to borrow that 600 and some, is it million, Mm -hmm. that um, they are authorized to borrow? So, Yeah. Let's get your reaction to it, folks. What do you... What do you... uh, What do you think of um, how things are shaping up at the moment. Are you pleased with this budget? Do you see it as a cost of living budget or is it, oh boy, we're going to pay, pay later budget. 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259. Tweet us, Facebook us, text us, 422-4796. 
Okay. Um, let's take this call. Good morning, call. You're on the air. Hi. Yes, sir. It seems like only the, the, the uh, rich and the public service servants could offer and receive, you know, because, you know, there's nothing, uh, nothing no legislation in place for, for livable wage in the private sector, livable wage in the country in general. See, when is that going to happen? You know, it seems like, sounds like a bamboozle, you know, like, you know, like he's trying to hoodwing the, the, the poor people, you know. There's, there's no housing for the poor. When's the housing for the poor coming? Housing, house ownership is not for the poor. You know, so, 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 so what's going on with that? You know, we need a livable wage in this country. He needs to go and legislate a livable wage, maybe because he is the, the employer, him, him, and him, and the middle class, and, 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 and the rich, so they don't want to, you know, maybe they are asking not, not asking not to bring the livable wage so, so, so they can benefit. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, interesting viewpoint there. Uh, continue to call in 323 6232 325 4316. 325-4259. Tweet us. Facebook is text us 422-4796. I, I want to say more, but I know people can. I, I'm going, it's a holiday weekend coming up. I don't really want to go into it being like, cursed out. I think out. you should, Dwight. No, no, no. I'm about no. to ask you. Because, I mean, seriously, uh, or do we have people, young people especially, who are poor, who are trapped in that, like you can't break out of that system? Is that, is that what, we're, what we think we're seeing in this country? You, you think like we have a, like how it used to be in the 1800s or 1700s, where you are, you're in this class and you're, you're there. You can't get out of it. Is that how it works? To a certain extent, yes, Dwight. Yes? Oh, yes. Okay, well. To a certain extent, there are people who are trapped in a cycle of poverty. Uh-huh. That is a part of the yeah, yeah. I mean, so, I, some right? people, but that's not like every. I don't, I don't, I don't. This is going to derail the show. This is a whole conversation that we need to have because some people are really looking for the government to take care of them forever, right? And if you are mm-hmm. in a, a serious bind, I can understand it. But some people clearly think that I'm here. You need to take care of me. And that has to be a problem. But is that a culture that the government created? I can't answer that question. But um, but it is not going to get us anywhere. Very true. There are some people who are of that mindset, but there are some people who are really caught in that cycle of poverty yeah. and it's not for a lack of trying yeah right? some people what uh-huh. now what is some that doesn't mean everybody right that, that no it doesn't no. mean everybody but there's Just a whole like lot of people who don't mean know that to... everybody um is looking for the government to take care of that well the people who say it clearly are um but uh... but again i think that the government has contributed to that mindset mm. Okay. We, we, we've got to do maybe a whole week of shows on this. This is a big problem. This is huge. And um, so I, I do need to understand when people say housing for the poor. So what do we mean? I'm not saying we shouldn't have it, right? And, and So how will the poor pay for housing for the poor? Are they not expected to pay for the housing? Are we, the middle class and others, expected to pay for the housing for the poor? Is that, I'm just saying, I'm not saying it's wrong. I just need to know what we are expecting. But let's not do that today. Um, so just that, that, consider that an appetizer. It's going to be done today. No, no, we we got a lot to talk about, and so right, we I'm sure there are callers calling. There are calls right we now. We can't do this show not today. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna set it up. We'll have some good guests. We want to get everybody in to share their views on what this means, um, and we're gonna have to really dive deep into that livable wage discussion again. Because I think some people are thinking it's something that it's not really. But anyway, so that's a primer of things to come. Um, let's take this call, and hopefully we kind of get back sort of on track. Uh, good morning, call. You're on there. No, okay. All right, I see I'm getting the messages now. Oh, dear Lord. Yeah. Well, it's why you knew that would happen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, oh, boy, boy, boy. 
Uh, this one, oh, I'm going backwards though. So right, this person says, I couldn't agree with you more, Dwight. A lot of us are comfortable living in this state of poverty. Let's have a day talking about this. Oh, we need a week, a week talking about it. But something's not quite right. Um, this one here says, uh, Dwight and Laverne, the budget boasts of an impressive forecast of revenue income. But on the, on the other hand, the overall budget is actually a deficit budget. Further, they will be borrowing immediately. Yikes. Mm. The PM speaks to what people want to hear, but watch what will happen in the end. Reduce duty on auto parts, too. Well, they didn't do that one, but they need to. Absolutely. That's outrageous, right? Up to, what, sometimes more than 60%? And that's not including the, the VAT. So, no. right? Um, hmm. um, Dwight, are, the, are there electric SUVs and trucks? I can't drive a small car in Nassau for obvious reasons, i.e. they send you crazy and the ocean on the road after it rains. Tell the Prime Minister to get teachers' money right. Um, yes, there are electric SUVs and trucks, and more and more are coming. Um, every, every year. So, yep, get with it, I guess. Um, this person says, there, how is the government making healthcare less expensive when they have added VAT to medications? NHI doesn't make healthcare cheaper either. It makes it more accessible. Hmm. Another text here. Um, this is an exercise in futility and designed to make it seem as if the government is doing something. Without legislation, none of the food items are price-controlled, and therefore wholesale or wholesalers or retailers have absolutely no obligation to pass the savings on, and government is powerless to make them do it. Facts. Um, it's going to be a challenge in some ways. Yes, regards, it is. But um, they keep telling us to use our wallet power. And don't shop at the places that don't pass the savings on to you. And only you patronize the ones um, that do. How many of them do? And can, we, and can you purchase everything from the ones that do? Well, if there are any? Obviously, that means that we'll have to buy boats and bring them in ourselves. But, but that um, is what that means. Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing that means. Um, <laughs> um but I'm going to be taking my um, chicken watching job very seriously. <laughs> you're, you're a, we could create a chicken watch council. Yeah, I'm going to be taking that very seriously. So my first report will be next yeah. week, Thursday. Laverne Gardner, our Grand Bahama chicken watch council committee member. And um, so join the chicken watch. Chicken slash egg slash broccoli and all the other things. Uh, yes, to see if the prices have come down. Right. If they've come down, if the prices have come yes. down. All right. Um, let's take this call. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hey, good morning, Laverne. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Hi. We can That's barely awesome. hear you. We can barely okay. hear you. Better? A little bit. wanting a government, you know, a handout. Um, look, if we look around, not, not judging, just look around um, at what goes on uh, with everyone. You know, if, if, if we can afford to, to have our hair done every week or have our nails done every week, then obviously the priorities are, are, are wrong. You know, most of the priorities are wrong. You know, if you if you've got nothing to eat in your house, but you can you can afford to do those things, then we've got to shift we've got to shift the mindset somehow. If not, it just we can see it's just gotten worse and worse and worse over the years. Yeah. So that's 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 the beginning point, I think. Thank you very much. So that's it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a great holiday. You weekend. too. You too. Have All a great right. one. Bye -bye. Um, yeah, yeah, people will say that. Um, I remember. But, uh, but I want to say, Dwight, that yes, there are some people who have their uh, priorities wrong um, in terms of how they are managing the little that they have. But let's not paint everybody like that. I don't think she was. There are some people. There are some people who aren't getting their hair done, right? Who, who who aren't buying weaves and getting their nails done. They are very much struggling, as we like to say, to make ends meet. And so there are those people out there who who genuinely ha are having a very hard time. 
Yeah, yeah. I don't think she was discounting no. that. And so, no, I'm not saying that that she was. I'm just saying that a lot of times we make those statements, and when we do that, it ends up becoming a blanket statement, and we end up just then dismissing those people who fall into that category of I am struggling. I have cut every single corner that I can cut. I don't have cable. I don't have whatever we would even consider some of the necessities. And I am still struggling. Mm -hmm. And there are those people who are living in this country, just like there are people who are not doing all that they can um, and have a level of expectation that somebody else, in most cases, that the government will take care of them. And then there are those who are doing everything that they know how to do to be as prudent as possible, to be as conscientious as possible. Yes. But they are caught in that cycle. Absolutely. And I don't want to um, act like that's, that is not happening either, right? Um, that is definitely happening. But like you said, there are some others who are... So let's not focus on mm. those some others. Right. right? Well, let's mm. advocate. And to this extent, mm -hmm. we still need to advocate for those who genuinely have need. And we shouldn't, we should not, we shouldn't um, not do it because there are those who are abusing the system. That's a very good point. We all know people who are abusing the system. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's an excellent point there. Um, let's take another call. Good morning, call. You're on the air. Morning, Dwight. Morning, LeBron. Hi. Morning. Uh, I must say, Laverne, I, I, I agree with every sentiment that you've expressed just now um, to the previous caller. You know, it's unfortunate that some people would uh, get their nails done, get their hair done, but recognize the misery index in this country. Some people use that as a form of, of some type of normalcy, just to use the little couple extra dollars that they have after they have been struggling over the many things such as feeding themselves or whatever to try and uplift their spirits uh, personally. So uh, I wouldn't actually put that person down. I've actually had conversations no longer than last week with a few of the women who talk about doing this, some of the things that I deem as questionable. But when I listen to the explanations, I mean, it, it made perfect logical sense. So I, I, can, I can understand why they would get their nails done, uh, they would get their hair done, perhaps even weekly, even though they cannot afford it. They still uh, make that sacrifice to do it so they can uplift their spirits. The part that I really want to address this morning, Dwight, is this. We talk about the middle class in this country. And I'm going to tell you, today, you, I, Laverne, and all of us in this age bracket, uh, I think technically would refer to ourselves as the middle class of the day. And the way that the finances in this country, the disparity with the finances where we cannot get a decent, we got jobs, but they're not paying us to a level to sustain our family lives today is the thing that's in at question. And any time you bring up the issue of trying to increase the minimum wage for our talent, our knowledge, and everything on, on most, in most of these places that we are employed, you find that people raise up, but oh well, the other things got to go up in order to compensate. But 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 what about all these years you've been utilizing and been benefiting, and you've been making your profit margins? But we are still, but but a lot of us are still being paid at a level that cannot sustain our personal lives. That is something that really needs to be looked at. I hear about the livable wage. I heard some people talk about the three hundred and fifty dollars to four hundred dollars, but in reality. When you really look at it, that is actually a figure that needs to be attained in order for us to get some normalcy of what the middle class represents, at least that. But, but that, still, today, that's not it. Mm -hmm. Everyone is still around this $250, but the, but the inflation rate in the world, I won't even talk about the Bahamas, is so high that even the $250 is not going to meet it. So I think we as Bahamians need to really look at these issues take away the party colors and the affiliations. You'll notice the politicians are not complaining because they're living comfortably. When are we as the average ordinary Bahamians in this country going to live comfortably in a land that is wealthy? We need to figure that out. Thanks for taking my call this morning, yeah. Dwight. Okay. No, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, let's take this call really quickly, and then we've got to get your text messages. Um, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Uh, Poor people doesn't need the government to do nothing for them but do a livable wage legislation. 
you know, and, and, and that's, that's the fact. And, 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 and public housing is public housing. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's for the poor. The poor will always be with us. It ain't about the one-off or the three-off who's going to get out of poverty. The poor will always be with us. And these poor, the same people that you, you say, no, we're we going to do this for you. We're going to provide housing for you. We're going to... We, we, we do the, the, the wage legislation. I mean, we, we are raising uh, the, the, the wages and in, in increments and the like. But then it's a lie. You're doing it for the rich people and the middle class people. Middle class people live above the livable wage. You got to be to live to be in the middle class. You have to have you have to be living. You have a livable wage. You know, so it's all about the, 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 the middle class in this country. In this time, like, like the minister, like the former prime minister said, he, this time, he, he would have done something for the poor, you know, and these governments should do something for the poor. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Um, it, it's happening, Laverne, like I said. I knew this was going to go off. Um, so we're getting all kinds of messages, people all over the place saying, uh, um, uh, this one says, Dwight, do you really live here? You are really out of touch with the Bahamian. I, I see... You can't be in touch with everybody, but I'm telling you, you're more in touch than you think. And um, there are people, if I say any more, you all going to, we're going to, the whole show's going to have to be about this. But they are, no, I'm not, I'm going to hold it. We're going to yeah. save this Laverne for and a just full. Just read the text and yes, then yes, you yes, yes. But, you know, we, but you we'll know. do it like that. Mm, okay. All right. Oh Unless boy. it's really, really, we'll just, Let's just, just read the text and, and then we won't comment and then that way we won't keep going, you know. Mm. <sighs> okay. Uh, this person says here, I'm going to continue to buy local farm products to uh, too much petroleum wax and pesticides on imported produce or you don't, um, or don't shop for domestic produce. It will be a huge economic leak for the farmers in the Bahamas. Um, this one says, I'm really disappointed with that lady caller regarding uh, female hair. I mean, that's all she has to offer this morning to bring down people. Um, people need to fix their hair to go to work. She's just giving an example. Just giving an example. Yeah. And I, I don't think it was yeah. the, the comment was made for her to bring down people. No, 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 no. Okay. They, they... She said nothing about about not fixing your hair. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, again, it's and it was just the example, point was right, right. The point was priorities that um, right. people will say so certain let's things. Not shift, let's not shift it. Yes, she, she just used it as a point of reference to say to have you know your priorities together. Yeah. she certainly wasn't advocating that people go ungroomed. No, no, just an example. We could we could use other examples, right? People who are traveling all over the place, but are not paying their bills, are not doing this, and are asking for handouts and stuff like that. You know, um, other examples, but that doesn't mean everybody who does that is that like that, whatever, but sure. Um, but this, um, I don't know which one they mean now, but the last caller could not have said it any better. Um, minimum wage needs to be at least $300 yeah. for now. Um, this one says here, we really think that people who have low income should suffer until they could afford life. This country has priced locals out of a proper quality of life with our direct foreign investments. The government's job is to help those who cannot help themselves, help people gain access and ad, um, access to advancement, improve access to housing and food, land access, sustainable energy, and some key food pivots with improved life quality. We're also pushing lots of payments toward a capitalist lifestyle, and that's not ever going to work here. What? What, 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 what? What are we doing? It hasn't worked. I, don't know I think about this the was. Last, I, I'm not clear on the last part of the text or when he says we're pushing people to a capitalist lifestyle, but everything up to that point. I well mean, said. what? What well else? <laughs> this is the, like the uh, one of the capitals of capitalism this, in this place. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, it's never going to work here. What 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 type of lifestyle would you prefer? Communist, socialist? What, what which one? Anyway, we don't ever make enough to compete with the foreigners we allow to influence our economy. I explain that last part though. Um, even the Christians that pray to the highest powers are waiting on their blessing. Mm -hmm. 
This one says here, um, talk about hair. What about fellas spending their paychecks at a bar on Friday? It's all the same thing. All the same thing. Yeah. Um, I, it's all about priorities. You yes. Know? Whether, where, wherever. If you are using the little money that you have for, let me put it this way. If you aren't using it to meet your financial obligations and commitment, whatever they may be, and instead you're using it to, well, I guess we'll say you're wasting it, um, you know, for lack of a better term, then we're talking about priorities. Mm -hmm. So it goes however you're doing that, whether it's you're spending it at the bar, you're doing whatever. That's the, We're just talking about prioritizing. This texter here says, I appreciate the lady caller, but um, sometimes these treatments are part of their work attire and also therapy. So take away these simple pleasures and make the entire picture harder. Mm. Um, this one says here, all this budget is uh, not reflecting a caring or sympathetic government. The new duty-free items are stuff you won't find in a person who's on social services or minimum wage cart. I find it extremely offensive when the food program was cutting... Spent sending people to social services for assistance that, that, that then cutting the budget by $32 million at the same time, increasing traveling budget. This is not a caring, a caring budget for the mm. average or poor Bahamian. Wow. Well, I hear you. I mean, a case could be made that with the lowering of the duty, now more people could afford to eat those things, which are healthier for you than many things that are affordable. Right? No? Okay. <laughs> um, let's take a break. When I come back, I've got a couple of crazy stories to tell people. Things that I've, that I've experienced over the past two days. You won't want to believe this. One involves gas, gasoline. This story will scare you. I'm, I'm, I'm tuned in. Yeah. Stay tuned, folks. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio. It's Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. To Tony Williams Darling Highway, the roundabout there. That's the northbound lanes, as usual. And um, quite a bit of traffic on Tony Williams Darling Highway as well, westbound, after you pass that roundabout. And some building traffic westbound on the way to the roundabout. Also, Gladstone Road's busy um, just north of Fire, Tra Fire Trail. You see that heavy traffic in front of you in the northbound lane on the way to JFK Drive. Got some building traffic on Carmichael eastbound to Blue Hill Road, and Blue Hill Road's already seeing heavy traffic from Soldier up to the roundabout with Independence Drive. Elsewhere, we've got Eastern Road just east of Fox Hill. You'll see that traffic heading westbound to Johnson Road and then pockets along Prince Charles Drive. Those are the hot spots for now. We'll have another real-time report for you after the 8 o'clock news. That's your Morning Blend Traffic Alert brought to you by RBC. Experience cashless purchasing power and chip and pin security with your RBC Visa Classic Credit Card. Manage your day-to-day -day expenses and apply today at rbc.com slash Caribbean slash Visa Classic. And time for another check of your weather for this morning. Brought to you by BTC. We've got a surface trough across the northwest Bahamas combined with tropical moisture streaming across the islands. That's going to enhance shower activity mainly in the northwest and central Bahamas. For today, for the northwest and central islands, look for variably cloudy, warm, and humid conditions with a gradual increase in cloudiness. Scattered showers and thunderstorms by late morning, early afternoon. Some showers may be heavy and thunderstorms strong to severe at times. 
For the southeast, Bahamas, partly cloudy, hot, and humid, with a chance of a few isolated showers or thunderstorms. Expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. We're looking at highs getting up to around 88 Fahrenheit, 31 Celsius. Overnight lows tonight getting down to about 73 Fahrenheit, 23 Celsius. In your extended outlook for your holiday weekend, we've got a broad area of low pressure near the Yucatan Peninsula that could possibly become a tropical depression or tropical storm while moving slowly northeastward. Heavy and uh, prolonged rainfall, severe thunderstorms, strong gusty winds and rough seas from the system are likely to affect the Bahamas, especially the northwestern islands, over the next two days. So all residents are being urged to pay close attention to the system and take necessary precautions. So pay attention during the holiday weekend, folks. So tomorrow, Labor Day, mostly cloudy to overcast and breezy with widely scattered showers and thunderstorms. Saturday, mostly cloudy to overcast and breezy still with widely scattered showers and thunderstorms. More on what's happening in the tropics. Everyone's being urged to keep abreast with what's going on with the system. That area of... Disorganized showers and thunderstorms associated with that broad area of low pressure over the northwestern Caribbean Sea and Yucatan Peninsula has a high chance, about 80% chance, of tropical cyclone formation during the next five days and is likely to become a tropical depression while it moves northeastwards over the next few days. Then we've also got that weak surface trough. It's now just about 150 miles northeast of the northwest Bahamas. That's still producing disorganized shower activity. That's what's been affecting us over the past few days. The system has a low chance, about a 10% chance, of tropical cyclone formation through the next five days as it slowly migrates east-northeastwards away from us and into the Atlantic. So it's been a very interesting week weather-wise and more to come, so keep abreast. We'll keep you posted here on Guardian Radio. But that's your morning blend weather check brought to you by BTC. Switch to BTC and get two months of free internet for two for new customers. Pay for the first month and get the second and third months free Get the speed you need and great savings on the Bombs' best network. With BTC's fiber network, you can browse the web, enjoy social media, and stream your favorite HD movies. Visit a BTC store or call 225-5282 to sign up today. Conditions apply. BC has been growing with the Bahamas for over 110 years. We are committed to deepening our relationship with existing clients and forging new ones in the future. With investments in youth, education, and environmental initiatives, we're dedicated to helping you and our communities grow. We're here to help you flourish. We're RBC. RBC Royal Bank. You know, you should teach a savings class. Cause you know everything. No, I just choose wisely. Like, I just got two months free home internet from BTC. All I did was sign up for internet. Two months internet free? For real? I bundled my internet and mobile services, and now I'm paying half of what the other guys charge. Plus, as a new customer, I get two months internet free. What? Now, that's a big deal. Switch to BTC Internet and get the second and third months free for new customers. Condition supply. Breakfast just got better at Wendy's. Introducing the breakfast piggy bag. Enjoy a double sausage muffin with two square sausage patties, a freshly cracked egg, and cheese served on a toasted English muffin, a medium waffle fries, and an orange juice for only $5.25, fat inclusive. Add an apple pie for just $1 more. Say what? At Wendy's, better breakfast is all day. Offers valid in participating locations. Wendy's, different inside and out. You're always on the go. We know life can be a daily rush. CIBC, First Caribbean, you can count on us. We make life easier. Manage your accounts at any time. Apply for a loan. It's easy when you bank online. This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. Boy, 
Let me tell you something. I ain't no for who I have a clue of something. I know you know. But I can tell you one thing. I watch it. I watch it, you know. But I'm telling you. Watch on my friend. Woman man is damn me too. Watch on my friend. We're back here with Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Strong along with Laverne Gardner on this Thursday morning before the long holiday weekend. We love it when Labor Day and Whit Monday are in the same weekend. Oh, my goodness. If, if only we could do this permanently. If only. But, hey. Um, okay, Laverne, as I said, I got a couple of stories. Um, you know, anyway, neat. So... Which one you would, one, one is scarier than the other? Which one do you want to hear first? Um, I want the gasoline one. Yeah? Okay. So, I'm at the gas station on Tuesday. I'm getting, is it important to say what I'm getting? But anyway, okay. No, I'm getting 50. you at the gasoline station on Tuesday. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah, all right. So, I'm getting my gas. I go inside to pay with my car to come back out. And uh, the, it's, you know, it's, the pump is running and stuff. I look down and I see drip. Trip, 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 trip. I'm like asking the pump tenant, hey, what, what is that? Is that gasoline? He says, oh, yeah, yeah, this, this, this pump have a leak. I'm like, huh? what, what are you saying? So uh, the gas is not going in my car? Yeah, we've well, just, we just been like this for a couple of days now. I've been telling the, the boss that. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know that what gas is six, six something? You're telling me gas is dripping down the side of my car and not going in, and I'm paying all this money. You, you better go and talk to the manager. So I go in there, and I say, is the manager in? They say, well, the supervisor's in. And I, okay, let me talk to the supervisor. And the supervisor comes out, and she's like, um, yeah. I said, well, okay, come come and see. I'm having a problem at this pump. I said, this thing is leaking. It's not going in my car. And you could see the puddle in the in the opening where the gas goes. Yeah, And um, I'm like, oh. I'm like, uh-huh, yeah, so this is crazy. I'm paying for gas that I'm not getting. Well, and, and like, and then another pump attendant who didn't serve me is like, yeah, "That's not much. That ain't nothing much." I mean, what are you talking about? Everything counts. You paying for it when gas every is six ounce, something a gallon. Every drop that didn't go into your car that's on the floor on the ground, you had to pay for that. And so the supervisor says, "Well, I don't know what you want us to do." I said, "Well, what can you do?" Um, I, I guess I could offer some compensation. Like you okay, can't. okay, what? And That's yeah, right, she's and she out. says, "What would you like?" I say, well, "What can you do?" She says, "We could do a dollar." <laughs> and the <Laverne, laughs> almost. <laughs> <laughs> what what is a dollar? I think I have eaten a dollar of gas accidentally, but before what? And that wouldn't do a thing to a baby. What is that? Especially today's a dollar of gas. I said, "Lady, I I gotta go." Let me, you all need to seal off this so that no one comes to this pump since this is not working. And I said before I would say anything, I was going to say it the next day on the air. I was going to tweet about it too. I said, no, let me give them a chance to seal off that pump. I drove by yesterday. Somebody's right there getting pumped, uh, getting the gas. And they haven't done it. They haven't addressed it at all. So, folks, pay attention. Get out of your cars and watch the pump to see if you're getting what you're, what you're paying for. And, um, That's it? Should I name these people? No, I'm not going to do it. You need no, to name no, these people. Give, give them one more chance. One more chance. Mm, okay. So th that was, um, I mean, it wasn't a whole gallon that didn't get in, but it was, it was gas didn't get in, right? And that cannot be happening in 2022 when, or any time ever when gas is 630-something. No, that's, that's unacceptable. Crazy stuff. And the casualness with which the people who work at these places... Like, ain't no big deal. What's the problem? I... It isn't a big deal because it isn't them, right? And unfortunately, a lot of times, that's how we look at things. Yeah. Um, it isn't a big deal because I'm not the person there at the pump using, I'm getting pot gas in my car and pot gas um, on the ground. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. This is what we have to deal with. And this is what people go back to say. The gov this is what the government needs to be doing. They need to be checking to make sure that this is happening. People are not getting fleeced and robbed. we got to go to the news. We'll be back. I'll tell you the, the other story after the break. When I walk to the door. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM.
Nassau, Bahamas. Welcome back to Morning Blend here on Guardian Radio 96.9. We are streaming live on GuardianTalkRadio.com and on the Guardian Radio app for smart devices. We're also on your televisions on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 and BTC Flow Channel 612. You can tweet us at MorningBlend969 or Facebook.com slash MorningBlend969. Text us 4224796. And now at 23, time for another check of your weather for today. Brought to you by Bahamas First Insurance. A lot going on weather-wise, as we've been telling you all week, and that's going to continue over the next few days. We've got a surface trough across the northwest Bahamas, combined with tropical moisture streaming across the islands. That's all going to enhance shower activity, mainly in the northwest and central Bahamas. And uh, lots of warnings for boaters to be alert for possible water spouts and uh, residents in low-lying and flood-prone areas to exercise caution and expect flooding during heavy or prolonged rainfall events. For today, your forecast calls for variably cloudy, warm, and humid conditions with a gradual increase in cloudiness. Scattered showers and thunderstorms by late morning, early afternoon. Some showers could be heavy and thunderstorms strong to severe at times. Expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. For the southeast Bahamas, partly cloudy, hot, and humid with the chance of a few showers, isolated showers, or thunderstorms. We're looking at temperatures getting up to around 88 Fahrenheit, 31 Celsius. Overnight lows tonight getting down to around 73 Fahrenheit, 23 Celsius. Now, in your extended outlook, you've got that broad area of low pressure near the Yucatan Peninsula that could possibly become a tropical depression or even a tropical storm while moving slowly northeastwards over the next few days. Heavy and prolonged rainfall, severe thunderstorms, strong gusty winds and rough seas from the system likely to affect the Bahamas, especially the northwestern islands over the next two days. All residents are being urged to pay close attention to this system and take necessary precautions. For Friday, Labor Day, tomorrow, mostly cloudy to overcast and breezy with widely scattered showers and thunderstorms, Saturday, mostly cloudy to overcast and breezy with widely scattered showers and thunderstorms again. And again, everyone's being advised to pay attention. I know it's a holiday coming up, but pay attention to what's happening with the weather. That large area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms with the broad area of low pressure is expected to... Well, it has an 80% chance of becoming a tropical cyclone during the next five days. It is currently over the Yucatan Peninsula and Caribbean Sea. And um, it will likely be a depression while it moves northeastwards over the next few days. What we've been experiencing is that surface trough, and that is now about 150 miles northeast of the Bahamas. And it's producing disorganized shower activity still. The system has a low chance, about a 10% chance of tropical cyclone formation through the next five days. But the good news is that that is moving away from us, moving towards the east, northeast, and into the Atlantic. But again, all eyes on what could become a depression over the next few days out in the Caribbean Sea in the Gulf of Mexico heading in this direction. So again, stay tuned to Guardian Radio for updates throughout the day and pay attention on the holiday and throughout the weekend for the very latest on the tropics. That's your morning blend weather check brought to you by Bahamas First Insurance, still the first and only local insurance company and agency network that lets you buy car and home insurance 100% online. Try it at BahamasFirst.com.
again, time for another check of your traffic for this morning, brought to you by RBC. For all of life's moments, there's one Visa Classic credit card. And in your traffic, uh, a reminder about Village Road. You're being asked to avoid the area as the work continues there. There's a lot of work going on there. And if you can, avoid Village Road or if you have to, follow the posted signs. Getting reports of an accident on uh, Carmichael Road. That's holding up traffic. Both eastbound and westbound are going to be noticing that um, you know, this is near Opulent Drive on the approach to Opulent Drive. We're heading westbound. And that's uh, backing up traffic quite a ways on Carmichael. Um, westbound mainly, but also eastbound. So keep that in mind. If you can, avoid the area. You might want to get to Gladstone Road and go around. Gladstone Road is not looking bad at all this morning. Um, just as you get closer to JFK Drive, you'll see that traffic in front of you. The same cannot be said for Mile Butler Highway. Heavy traffic there from Fire Trail all the way up to Tawny Williams Darling Highway. And Tawny Williams Darling Highway is backed up quite a bit westbound to that roundabout there. Elsewhere, we've got uh, West Bay Street eastbound in the Saunders Beach area near the roundabout with New Providence Highway. You're going to be backed up quite a ways from Go Slow straight up to Saunders Beach. And... Uh, Soldier Road, heavy traffic from uh, Prince Charles Robinson Road all the way through the intersection into Village Road and uh, Bernard and Wolf Road. Bernard westbound busy as well. Eastern Road, very heavy traffic westbound from San Susie all the way up to Johnson Road and pockets along Prince Charles Drive and Robinson between Soldier and Old Trail. Another trouble spot for you this morning. Blue Hill Road, as usual, from north of Soldier to the roundabout with Blue Hill Road in both directions, roundabout with Independence Drive in both directions on Independence Drive backed up as well. So a lot of issues this morning. Keep that in mind as you make your way about. But good luck to you. That's your real-time traffic and your morning blend traffic alert brought to you by RBC. Experience cashless purchasing power and chip and pin security with your RBC Visa Classic credit card. Manage your day-to-day expenses and apply today at rbc.com slash Caribbean slash Visa Classic. Preparing for a hurricane can make all the difference in safeguarding lives by knowing what actions you should take to reduce the effects of hurricane disaster. Get all the facts of the potential of having insurance, impact resistant windows, home emergency power, surge protectors, essential supplies, plus so much more before the storm. After the storm, where to purchase building or cleaning supplies, waste disposal, medical care, which auto shop to go to after driving through flooded streets and more. The Nassar Guardian's Hurricane Guide will help to make sure everyone knows what to do in the event a hurricane approaches. Take advantage of this double insertion opportunity plus 15 radio commercials. Contact us today, 302-2300, or your account executives. Will you be prepared? Imagine driving your dream car, doing all the things you never thought you could, like perfecting your parallel parking skills or picking up your date. Everyone loves to dream. Stop dreaming. Start driving with a brand new offer from Scotiabank. With an auto loan from Scotiabank, benefit from no payments for up to two months, a low interest rate, up to nine years to repay, and free insurance for the first year, up to 2.5% of the loan amount. Promotion ends June 30th, 2022. Stop dreaming and start driving today with an auto loan from Scotiabank. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Boy, let me tell you something. I need no but boy, I have a clue of something. I know, I know you know. But I can tell you one thing. I watch it. I watch it, you know. But I'm telling you. Watch on my friend. Woman, man, it's got me too. Watch on my friend. What did I do to you? Watch on my friend. We're back here with Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Strong, along with Laverne Gardner, on this Thursday morning. Coming up in just a couple of minutes, we're going to be talking with uh, the U.S. Embassy about um, why they've decided to fly the LGBT flag again for Pride Month. They're going to give us some of the um, reasons for that and more. That's coming from just a few minutes. Um, Laverne, people are... Tell me I need to say which station that was before the break. I was telling you the, about my horror experience at a, 
uh, local uh, gas station where the gas was dripping and not going into my tank, and people say I need to say who it is, but um, I, I don't know. But um, I, I'm, I'm going to report it. I'm going to report it to BBSQ and maybe... Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I do. But um, but they're still using that pump, and that's very scary. People are saying, "Yeah, this is a fire hazard. That's that's dangerous." Um, and this other one here says, um, "Call the gas station's name and location so more people can know and complain. That's the only way they'll fix it." Most people stay in their cars, so they won't even know they're losing money from a leak like that. Yeah, you've got to check. You've got to check. And um, and um. They need to be notified. Who needs price control needs to be notified about the leaking pump, and that pump needs to be shut down and repaired ASAP. I don't. I just don't understand how casual the people there were about this. Just very, very disturbing. But hey, are you there, Laverne? Do we lose you? I'm right oh, here. Okay. All right, there we go. Um, <laughs> the other story, really quickly, because we've got to go. Um, so we've got a. Oh, people are saying, yeah, you really should name the station. Name the station, but absolutely speak with management. Because clearly speaking with the shift supervisor didn't help. So I think that you should have a conversation with management. It's one of the ones out east. That's that's mu as much as I'm prepared to say at the moment. Um, I don't know why I'm trying. Just I, I, I really don't get it, Dwight. I don't know I, either. Like, I'm you trying... are going hard not to call I... the name of this <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I feel a little weird about it. I, mm, anyway, but um, yeah, okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe by the end of the show, I'll say something else. All right, mm. so the other issue, and most people won't care about this other issue, but this is bothering me greatly. So this keeps happening in my area where I live, out east, and um, strange dogs keep popping up out of nowhere, and then not well. Like, people are clearly bringing dying dogs to the eastern end of the island and just leaving them there. I guess they think they're going to what walk into the sea and be one with the ocean and just that'll be the end of them. No, they, they don't do that, folks. They, they linger around. They go and roam about through everybody's yards and sleep on our doorsteps and, and look like they're about to die around us. So th it's happened again. It happened a few months ago. And it's happened again. This, I thought it was actually an escaped lion. This dog has no hair. It's just a, a, a furry patch around his face. And I'm like, whoa, there's a lion. What? Nope, that's a dog with severe mange. And um, he really looked like he was about to die. I've been calling everybody, the Humane Society, and uh, oh boy, they say that's not really their role. They've been doing it because animal control is overwhelmed. I've been calling animal control. They finally answered the phone yesterday and were asking me all kinds of silly questions about what my name is and where, what's my house number. I'm like, hey, it's not my dog. I don't know. Who, why, why are you asking this? There's a dog here. He's dying. You need to get him. What's happened? Other people have noticed, and they're feeding the dog now. So before, he couldn't even get up. And now he's walking around and barking at people who are exercising through the corner and walking their own dog. So now he thinks this is his territory, but he's still mangy and on the verge of I don't know what. But so this is an appeal to people to stop dumping dogs and also for someone to come and please get this dog. For God's sake. Um, animal control and the Humane Society, the poor Humane Society is clearly overwhelmed. Um, but um, this is a crisis situation. And, and you can see it all over New Providence. We it seemed like we'd gotten a handle on the stray dog issue, but it is back. It is back, and there are dogs all over this place, everywhere. And um, I don't know what's going on. But um, I don't know how this dog got to this point, and he's, never, he's not been neutered. He's a big, grown dog and has lived a long, well, he, he looks like he's lived a long time. How we got to this point is unbelievable. I, I have a few pictures. It really is deplorable what, ha what has happened to him. But um, it's, been, it's going on more than a week. And, oh, boy. Anyway, 
that's all I wanted to say. Those are the things I might name that everyone's harassing me now. I'm the bad guy for protecting this wicked gas You're station. You're not. You're not. Why are Dwight? you protecting them? Why are you protecting them? Dwight, I just want to say that you are not the bad guy, but you are part of the problem. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you are protecting them. I'm the one who got robbed here. Have well, some sympathy for me. You don't have a problem with that. Oh, okay. All right. Um, <laughs> Well, let's see. Stay tuned. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, if I name the station. Well, you did Just the right thing. All I'm thing telling you to do stray, is keep with the with the stray dogs. You did the right thing. But Why won't you do the right thing with the with the with the gas station? I've sent a warning to the payment people. Watch what when your car is getting gas. That's Watch yes. That pump. is a part of it. Mm -hmm. But we have to address this singular problem with this particular service station mm. and this leaky pump. Yeah. You need to be able to say to the people, when you go to X, Y, and Z gas station, that pump, pump number five is not working. Yeah. It is leaking, and you need to call management. Mm. Yeah. Those are your mandates. Yes, 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 yes. Um, uh, this, oh boy, these text messages. Someone says here, mangy dogs, when you put diesel on them, it brings back their hair. That really, I mean, whether that works or not, that just doesn't sound right. Yeah, um, I'm thinking that, that can't has be, to be another way. That cannot be, no, no. That has, there has to be another way. And, you know, of late, I've seen an increase in my area, stray cats. Um... And we already have stray dogs, but stray cats, I've seen an increase in that. Mm. And when you feed them, it, of course, it makes it worse. But the main problem is that people get these pets. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they decide that either they don't want them anymore, they're tired of them, or they can't afford them. And rather than taking them to like the Humane Society or whatever, they just let them go. It's awful. Um, and this, it's like, here you go, go and try to make it on your own. Are you kidding me? No, right insane, you know? insane, insane. This one says here, I know what you mean, Dwight. I live out east also, and the response has been absolutely ridiculous from Animal Control. Um, um, send the name to the number I want to know. Oh, this is the name of the, the station they want to know. Uh, this one says here, so Dwight, would you not like to know if you were to approach that station? Because I feel bullied today. I feel... What if your family members? What if your family members were in your car? What? <laughs> oh Lord! Uh, this one says, hey, "Don't call the name. Speak with management. You told us it's out east, so um, with the head office as well. It's serious." Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, Dwight, you're acting like these politicians who like to say we gave you some money later. Call the station's name, man. Uh, I got to take a break to catch myself. I feel pressured this is this is like high school all over again the, the bullying <laughs> the bullying when we come back um we're talking with the u.s embassy this is morning blend our guardian radio 96.9 i ain't over boy i have a clue of something i know you know but i can tell you one thing i watch it i watch it you know and i'm telling you what's on my friend woman man is got me too what's on my friend around the world Cleveland Clinic is recognized as a leader in healthcare. Our team of experts relentlessly pursues the best for our patients. From groundbreaking cancer research to state of the art heart surgery, life saving innovations happen here every day. When it's time to travel for your health, it's time to travel to Cleveland Clinic. Your destination for care, for every care in the world. To learn more, visit clevelandclinic.org slash Caribbean. Fidelity, we're good for you. I used to think of the bank as my personal ATM machine. If I wanted a new car, new furniture, a weekend trip to Miami, no problem. Just max out the credit card or top up my loan. I was a big baller until I realized that 75% of my salary was going to pay back all those loans. Fidelity's personal financial coaching was the best solution. Fidelity gave me a plan with a debt consolidation loan that has a built-in savings that pays 5% interest. I now only have one low monthly payment, plus money in my pocket. Give Fidelity Bank a call at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport. Visit any of Fidelity's locations 
or visit our website at fidelitygroup.com. Doctors Hospitals Pharmacy introduces a new spin on prescriptions called Pick Up Now, Pay Later. That's right, you can collect your medications first and pay after. How does it work? Step one, submit a prescription online. Step two, select a pickup site. Step three, collect your medication. And step four, pay online within 14 days. For more info, call us at 242-302-4785 or visit us at doctorshosp.com. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. My mama told me when I was young, we're all on superstars. She rolled my hair, put my lipstick on, in a glass of purple dry. There's nothing wrong with loving who you are, she said, cause it made you perfect, baby. We're back here with Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Straw along with Laverne Gardner. And uh, changing gears this morning, the U.S. Embassy uh, is observing Pride Month and once again going to be raising the LGBTQ flag in uh, commemoration of this. And uh, here to tell us about this, very pleased to welcome back to the show, Public Affairs Officer Daniel Durazo. Good morning, Daniel. Great to have you with us as always. Morning, Dwight. Thanks so much for having me on again. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Yes, yes. Okay, so last year you were on the show and you talked about this, and um, it was controversial. Quite a few people um, uh, questioning what the motives were, but, but let's talk about it. Why, sure. why is this important for the U.S. Embassy to do that here in the Bahamas? Um, tell us all about it. Happy to, Dwight, and uh, just want to say that uh, I really appreciate you having me on the show to talk about this. I appreciate your, uh, your audience for listening and I think ultimately that's a big part of why we fly the flag. I mean, at a basic level, we're trying to express our own as the U.S. government support for the human rights of LGBTQI plus persons in the Bahamas and around the world. And uh, just sort of for, for reference, in case people aren't familiar, LGBTQI stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and intersex persons. But on a more kind of human level, I would say that something like raising the flag, coming on your show to talk about it, our charge is going to be on with Juan McCartney a little bit later today. Uh, it's about sparking a conversation. It's about encouraging Bahamians, whether they are part of the LGBTQI community or, <clears throat> or not, uh, to, to feel comfortable talking about this issue and talking about the community and talking about their uh, place in the Bahamas. And I think that at the end of the day, conversation is the only way to figure out sort of what the, what, what, how, how that community is, is going to have their rights uh, protected uh, and, and treated with the same dignity and respect that anybody else is. Mm -hmm. And that conversation is one of the things that I think we were, uh, that I was most proud of from our, our uh, uh, raising the pride flag and our activities last year was that we did see a lot of conversation in the aftermath of us raising the flag. We saw a lot of conversations happening on social media. We saw a lot of op-eds in the newspaper of people arguing both for and against the flying of the flag, people uh, trying to sort of uh, uh, get into the details as to the history of the LGBTQI movement in other places, in, including the United States, but not just the, the U.S. The U.S. certainly isn't, uh, isn't the only country where LGBTQI plus persons have, had made, has, have made strides in terms of um, securing uh, greater uh, respect and 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 uh, guarantees of their rights, and uh, not all of those conversations were necessarily um, uh, positive, uh, positive or, or productive. Some people obviously do see this, as you say, as as a very controversial 
issue. But ultimately, I think the conversation is important because the conversation is the only place to start. I, I think it's it's the only real starting point to to figure out, to sort of for the Bahamian people to to figure out and decide uh, how how they're gonna how they're gonna uh, pursue this issue. Yeah, we're getting already. Um, when I announced this at the start of the show, we got already um, text messages about it and, um, sure. and I remember some last year I think I'm seeing it again so I'm saying well what about other causes why not the Black Lives Matter flag or um, other things um, along those lines why LGBTQI I think ultimately in in uh, any embassy has to you know make make decisions we can't I think the bottom line is we can't necessarily do everything and we have to prioritize and, and, and choose um, our activities based on where we think we can make the greatest impact and where we think our voice is most needed on a particular, uh, or not even necessarily most needed, but perhaps most useful on a particular topic. And uh, our charge is very passionate about this issue. Uh, but that's not the only thing that it's about. This is a, he a very high priority for the uh, for President Biden's administration. Uh, the pride flag is flying in Washington, D.C., if I'm not mistaken, as we speak, as well as at 100 other U.S. embassies around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the Biden administration has been very clear that this is a very big priority for them. And I think when it comes down to sort of our decision here in the Bahamas, uh, I should say that an another thing that makes me proud of sort of our, our activities around pride both last year and this year is that we, we have not sort of done this sort of alone and, and in a vacuum. We've been in conversations with members of the LGBTQI community, of the LGBTQI advocacy community uh, since last year. Uh, over the course of the past year and uh, certainly more intensely uh, just before Pride Month this year. And we have, we have talked to them. <clears throat> We've asked them, uh, you know, what, what can we do that is useful? And when we talk about uh, trying to increase visibility and trying to spark conversations around this topic, uh, we, we got a lot of support for the idea of raising the flag again precisely so that people ask these questions so that you and I can have a conversation about it on the radio so that our charge goes on the radio to talk about it. Uh, people will have seen in our press release yesterday that we're uh, working with several local establishments to have kind of uh, events and opportunities to observe pride throughout the month. And uh, in our conversations with the LGBT pride community, they kind of said to us like that, that was important last year. And it's important to, to keep having those conversations. Um, and I, I would say that that's one of the reasons why this topic in particular, uh, in terms of making it as visible as we do by, by flying the flag, that, that those are some of the reasons why, um, why we decided to do it. We've got an interesting text here. Someone's asking, um, well, you mentioned the 100 countries around the world, the embassies around the world that you're flying the flag, but they're asking mm -hmm. if you are flying the pride flag in every country that there's a U.S. embassy, especially countries mm -hmm. that are very vocal about their um, displeasure with the LGBTQI lifestyle. Um, mm -hmm. Is that happening there? Perhaps maybe uh, Muslim countries and um, countries of that ilk? Sure. Uh, it's true that um, there are many countries around the world where the the challenges that the LGBTQI community faces are, are oftentimes much more dangerous. There's countries out there where uh, violence, like just kind of acts of violence against LGBTQI, LGBTQI plus persons are more common. There are places where by law, uh, being openly uh, lesbian, gay, or, or, or bisexual is punishable by death. And, and for that, for those reasons, there are countries where uh, trying to increase visibility and flying the flag can actually be counterproductive. It can cause a much more serious and sometimes violent backlash against members of the community in, in a way that shuts down the conversation as opposed to opening it up because people resort to violence. People are, uh, who are victims of that violence are obviously more afraid and are more likely to want to hide. 
and uh, people who may be on the fence and may be interested in talking about the topic uh, get off that fence and, and stay quiet. Um, and based on our conversations with members of the LGBTQI community here, we felt that that here the flying the flag would would not have a negative effect like that. And so the decision of some embassies to fly the flag or to not fly the flag I know is is very often informed by those kinds of considerations and the and the the basic fact that uh, what works in some places or what's useful in some places won't necessarily be useful everywhere else. Mm -hmm. what, uh, from what you're sure understanding, sorry, Dwayne. Mm -hmm. You, you in go. Those, in those countries where you have embassies where you've determined that this does not further the cause, this is not further the conversation, it's counterproductive. Mm -hmm. um, what decision have you made to acknowledge Pride Month? Have you made mm. any decision if not, you know, you said, okay, we're not going to fly the flag, right? Mm -hmm. But it, are you doing anything to acknowledge Pride Month in those countries? I can't really speak for, for any individual embassies, but I know from conversations with my colleagues that oftentimes uh, the way that the embassy will observe Pride or mark Pride will be to uh, take advantage of the month of June to have, uh, to organize sort of events, uh, perhaps private events and conversations with members of the LGBTQI community in those countries um, to sort of hear from them, to, to hear what their needs are and how the embassy can be more helpful, simply to bring people together uh, in countries where oftentimes members of the LGBTQI community don't even, don't even know who each other are or don't have a lot of opportunities to sort of speak openly and freely about the issues and the shared challenges that, that they face. So that's one way in which I know sometimes embassies will, uh, will try and, and, and observe pride when they can't do so necessarily publicly and visibly. Uh, in, in somewhat less extreme cases, perhaps an embassy might, might plan a, a more sort of public or open conversation where they have uh, uh, perhaps uh, folks from, from the United States or elsewhere who have been a part of the struggle for LGBTQI plus rights to talk to uh, people in, in their host country, uh, whether they are from civil society organizations or, or perhaps in the government, uh, but they won't necessarily do uh, they won't necessarily, they'll do that in a way that's a bit more subtle, perhaps, uh, if they feel that being more visible and vocal could be counterproductive. Mm -hmm. What do you see as um, some of the issues here facing the LGBTQI community? Um, that's, I think, one of the other things that uh, we've really benefited from having conversations with members of the LGBTQI plus community here is that they, they have been able to share with us what some of those challenges are. And uh, I, I don't want to speak for the community, but I can give some examples of some of the kinds of challenges that, uh, that they faced. A, a lot of it simply has to do with the fact that uh, there's sort of a couple of different sides, uh, as, as I've understood them. One of them is just uh, a struggle to sometimes access uh, services and 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 feel that they're being treated equally and and fairly the same way anyone else would. Uh, sometimes, for example, um, medical uh, services can be prob problematic for for LGBTQI plus persons, depending on sort of the the, the particular uh, medical service that they're seeking. Uh, we've also talked about the challenges when uh, when being the victims of of a crime, for example. And interacting with law enforcement, sometimes that can be a challenge. Uh, and and the other side of it, I think that we've heard a lot is simply the the continuing social stigma that exists in the Bahamas uh, around being openly LGBTQI plus and and wanting to just live your life freely, love who you love, have a family, uh, all of those things that I think. Uh, in, in, in many places, heterosexual uh, people take for granted, uh, they, they just want those same things. And in a country where there's still a strong social stigma where people are ostracized or made fun of or criticized or sometimes outright threatened uh, for being who they are, that's a really difficult, that's a really difficult challenge. And, and, and it brings up something that I, I, 
I've also heard uh, in our conversations with with the community, which is that, you know, I would say that as we've been saying, there are countries where it, where the the situation for LGBTQI plus people is is certainly much more dangerous, where there's a lot more violence, uh, where perhaps being LGBTQI plus is actually outlawed uh, or is actually punishable in some way. And that's not the case in the Bahamas. The Bahamas, uh, you know, has stipulations in its constitution where consensual uh, same-sex relationships are, are, are considered legal or, or allowed. But there's a difference between sort of simply tolerated and actually accepted by the society and actually treated with dignity and treated as equals. And uh, I think ultimately that's part of the, of, of the, the promise of a democratic society is that people are treated fairly, that there is that kind of uh, equality of, of, of treatment. And I think those are some of the challenges that that uh, that we see and that we've heard from the LGBTQI plus community here that they that they want to to face. I'm, I'm sure that if you asked uh, members of the LGBTQI community themselves, they they'd be able to go into a lot more detail mm -hmm. and uh, give you a lot more. But that's th those are some of the some of the fundamentals as I understand them. Yeah. Any other events planned for the month? Um, what can people expect? Yes, indeed. So yesterday uh, on social media, and we'll be sharing it throughout the month, we shared uh, what we're calling sort of a pride calendar, uh, which is just a, a basic calendar for the month of June with a number of different opportunities to uh, observe pride in ways both both big and small. Uh, and, and we're really proud that we've been able to kind of partner with several other uh, establishments here in the Bahamas uh, simply because it's a reminder to, to us, to the community, and hopefully to the general public that this isn't just the U.S. Embassy coming in and saying we support pride. This is us finding people in the Bahamas, whether they are LGBTQI plus or not, who are supportive of, of, of that community and who want to create more spaces where people can come together openly, interact, learn, talk about the issue and and have that that kind of ongoing conversation that we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, but with that said, uh, specifically next week on Wednesday, we will be hosting our first film screening. We'll be screening three films at the National Art Gallery of the Bahamas. I want to thank them for opening up their space for us to have these events. And uh, we'll be watching uh, uh, a few different films. The first one we're going to watch is uh, Milk which is about the U.S. politician Harvey Milk in California in the, in the 70s. He was one of the first openly gay uh, politicians in the United States. And the movie is, is about his struggle and sort of what that meant for the larger movement. So we'll be watching that movie and then having a, a discussion about it and sort of what, what are some of the, the themes, what are some of the lessons that we can learn. And we'll be hosting another couple of films, one of them uh, a Bahamian film, uh, over the course of the, of the rest of the month as well. Uh, okay. So that's sort of the next event that's coming up. But beyond that, uh, we've partnered with several other establishments to put their to put their support on the calendar, including uh, Pirate Republic, Bon Vivants, the National Art Gallery of the Bahamas, as I mentioned, the Turn Gallery. Uh, these are all places that have expressed their their support for the LGBTQI plus community. Uh, you can check out their social media to see some of the stuff that they've posted as well. And uh, yeah, just creating creating spaces like this for people to. Uh, to mark pride if they want to, uh, maybe to, to to even learn a little bit about pride and what it means uh, and have some conversations about it. Uh, wonderful stuff, Daniel. While we have you here, I'd ask you a couple of questions. Um, the, sure. We heard um, Prime Minister Davis this week uh, say that um, he's encouraging the United States to do more, to, to help us um, in the fight against gun smuggling into the country. Um, what can the U.S. do? Um, uh, what's your perspective on this? Sure. Uh, so we spoke to a couple of other uh, uh, journalists this week uh, about this topic as well, and emphasized that you know the United States and and the Bahamas and and our other regional partners are working together uh, to stem the flow of of illegal weapons uh, into the Bahamas and and into the Caribbean in general. This is a, a priority for the U.S. government, 
and uh, happy to say that, that here in the Bahamas, we're cooperating uh, closely with uh, the RBPF, with the judiciary, to provide equipment, to provide training, to trace weapons, uh, and, and help tie them to investigations of illegal weapon smuggling operations uh, happening in the United States. And uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of collaboration that's, that's, uh, that's ongoing. Uh, it's obviously a, a complex issue. Uh, but we are we work hard on it every day to invest in the shared security of the Bahamas and the United States. Yeah, uh, and and give us an update. I feel like every time we talk, this question comes up. But um, where things stand with the with an ambassador for the Bahamas? Um, ah, I knew you were going to ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like no. our, it's like our thing. It's like every I every think year. It is, I think it is our thing. Every time I come on, no matter what the the other topic is, you ask me about that. But that's okay. Um, uh, as, as people would have seen, uh, I, I think it was a, a few weeks ago, um, uh, President Biden announced his intent to nominate, uh, uh, Mr. Calvin Smyrie as, uh, Oh, US is that ambassador. how you pronounce it? I was, I was really wondering. I believe so. Yeah? I certainly hope that I got that right. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, uh, I might be in trouble. <laughs> okay. Um, but, uh, we can't really speak to the timeline at this point, uh, the, the, the Senate confirmation process. Uh, is a is a is is one that you know takes place in in Washington and that we don't uh, necessarily have any control over. So uh, we are we are standing by just like anybody else to to see that process unfold and uh, we'll, of course uh, welcome an ambassador once the nomination and the confirmation processes are complete. How many years has it been now since we haven't had one? I don't, if I, I don't think since we've not been on mistaken, the mistaken, I believe uh, I believe it. The last uh, U.S. ambassador to the Bahamas was in uh, back in 2011, I believe. Right. So, so before Guardian Radio went on the air. Oh my goodness gracious! Is okay. that so? Yes. I did ten not years. That. Ten years last month. So, yeah. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Well, that's, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But Daniel, thank you so much. Always a pleasure talking with you, Daniel Durazo. <laughs> with the U.S. Embassy here in Nassau. And I um, hope you have, you enjoy our holiday weekend. And um, and we hope that we'll get to talk to you again soon. Dwight, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks to the audience for listening and hoping that we all continue to have this uh, this open and, uh, and fruitful conversation about LGBTQI plus rights, uh, both during the month of June and, uh, and throughout the year as a whole. We certainly have plans to continue supporting the community, not just in June, uh, but over the over the the rest of the year and in the lead up to Bahamian Pride Week, which I think was announced again yesterday for uh, for October. Okay. So thanks again, Dwight, and thanks everybody. Hope you have a good day. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, we're gonna be back. We're gonna take a break for news. When we come back, morning blend business. We wrap up our Labor Week series. We're talking with the Trade Union Congress this morning, and getting details about the Labor Day March for tomorrow. Stay with us. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio ninety six point nine. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day.
Good morning and welcome to Morning Blend Business on this Thursday, June 2nd, 2022. Welcome back to our Morning Blend listeners. Once again, I'm Dwight Strawn along with my co-host Laverne Gardner. And uh, this morning we wrap up our Labor Week series with the Trade Union Congress of the Bahamas. They are here with us this morning. We're very pleased to have in the studio Freddie Munnings, Jr., who is the Director of Communications. And we are awaiting uh, President Obi Ferguson and um, uh, Kyle Wilson, who is the President of the Palms Electrical Workers Union. Um, but Freddie Munnings, always a pleasure. Good morning, sir. It is truly my Let's pleasure. Let's get that mic up there. There we go. It's truly my pleasure, Dwight, uh, to be with you. And uh, Ms. Gardner, right? Yes, yes. Yes, uh, yes. yes. Uh, Good morning. Pleasure. It's a pleasure. I don't know that we have met personally, but I've heard you many, many times on the show. And um, it sounds, it feels like I know you. So when I get down <laughs> to Grand Baham, I will make it my business to make sure that we meet. Wonderful. I would love that because yes. I would, it would be an honor to meet you in person. And we can have great discussions and conversations. Be happy to do it. And maybe you drag Dwight down. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a plan. Yes, I've been hinting (laughs) at Dwight that he needs to come. For a week. We did the show before together one time, but we need to go back there uh, very soon. We're going to work on that for the next few months. All right, so uh, while we wait for Obi Ferguson and Kyle Wilson to join us, um, we're all watching the weather in the tropics. Very concerned about um, what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Um, Any plans to uh, for for tomorrow in case of the rain? I mean, they're saying it's going to happen beginning tomorrow. Well, Dwight, first of all, we are very grateful And good morning to our listening audience all over the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're very grateful for the fact that we are able to, at least we've gotten permission to march, uh, which is traditional. As you know, for the past two years, we were not able to do Mm -hmm. it due to COVID and other things. And last year, we had a very interesting encounter when we tried to do a motorcade. You remember. Yeah, well, you know, we could talk about that. But the bottom line is this year, we have been given consent to march. We are going to uh, adapt all of the health protocols. We're going to encourage people to wear their masks as much as possible. We're going to have sanitizers for all of the... We've been uh, grateful to get some sponsorship to give out hand sanitizers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we're going to have the nurses and the doctors with us. So we know we're going to be yeah. on under heavy manners to adhere to the protocols. Mm-hmm. But with regard to the weather, right, the weather has never stopped... Uh, Labor Day March. Yeah. If you can play Super Bowl games in the weather, if you can do all of these other things, we are saying that we're going to have a March. Yeah. And we are hoping that the weather would cooperate. So, uh, hope unless it's just torrential rain and lightning and stuff where people's he- uh, safety may be mm-hmm. a danger, we plan to celebrate workers tomorrow. And at the end of the March, which will culminate um, at uh, the Awaki. We're going to have a fun day. Mm-hmm. We want to invite all the families, all of the children, all of the family members to come out. And we're just going to celebrate workers, yeah. adhering, of course, to the health protocols. All right. Um, I want to get your views on this. Um, everyone's been talking about it, of course, uh, the, the, the new umbrella union we have in the country. That Why did I think you were going to go? Well, you know, I have to. I have to ask you about this. Um, very long name. B-N-A-T-U-C. Some heavy hitter unions are, are part of that. Yes. Um, um, some would say decimating the NCTU, but, um, but they say no. They're still... They're still there, but um, but definitely people are paying attention to this. Well, what do you make of this? The fact that because there was talk just a few years ago of the your union TUC and the NCTU coming together. Well, that 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 is really my position, uh, as you said, a couple of years ago. Both of the umbrella bodies, yeah. including those persons right. who have uh, broken off to form this third uh, umbrella body, were a part of the discussion to unify the labor movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, trade unionism, by definition, is unification, not separation. However, our Constitution permits for all of us to have the right to associate with whomever we wish to associate. Mm-hmm. We have the various denominations of churches. We have various uh, uh, political parties, various social organizations. So everybody is entitled. But if you are preaching unification... I say, since we are supposed to be some of the top negotiators in the country, Mm -hmm. since we are supposed to be some of the most educated people in the country, Mm -hmm. at least we say that we are, why do you break away and be disunified when you are preaching unification? Mm -hmm. 
Whatever the reasons, I do not know. Perhaps maybe the question need to be asked of those who are breaking away. Mm -hmm. And so, but the bottom line is this. No matter what happens, one thing I can tell you for certainty, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas Trade Union Congress, of which I am associated, led by Mr. O.B. Ferguson QC, we don't have those issues. We are unified, 100% unified. That does not mean that we don't have our disagreements, mm -hmm. but we keep them in house, we work them out within our confines, and when we go to the general public, I believe that you would never hear any of our affiliates, of the 30 affiliates of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas Trade Union Congress, come against a position that has been uh, projected by the board of directors and the unified voice of our organization. Mm -hmm. So I say, that's what I can speak to. Those other persons need to speak for themselves. They must have the reasons why they do what they do. But the bottom line is this. Every union in this country were allowed the opportunity to come together in that forum when we talk about unification. Every union in this country was approached and agreed to, as we are aware, through their leaders to be a part of the MOU that we signed with the Progressive Liberal Party when they were in opposition. Mm -hmm. And that MOU was distributed to every major political party in this country. Yeah, yeah, we heard that this week from the NCTU. Um, every I mean, major I other people were aware political of it. party in the country. Mm -hmm. Why I know that? I was one of the framers of it, along with Mr. Ferguson and others, and the Honorable Fred Mitchell, we framed it, we distributed to every major party, mm -hmm. political party, of those, the, uh, the DNA and Mr. Lincoln Baines party responded positively, mm -hmm. verbally, never in writing, mm -hmm. to say that they wanted to create some an arrangement. Mm -hmm. The PLP was the only organization that responded with an MOU, asking us to sit down so that they could commit to certain things in writing so that we could hold their feet to the fire. And indeed, we are going to do that. The FNM never responded mm. to the uh, document. Mm -hmm. That's the position. Wow, okay. Mr. Um, Munnings, do you, sorry, Dre, mm -hmm. do you think that the formation of this new umbrella union, does it take away um, the impact of labor or take away from labor movement in the country? Well, you know, Ms. Gardner, I mean, from the surface, I have to say that it must have an impact because they represent people. They represent workers. And in some instances, I understand some of those unions associated with teachers, associated with the civil service and other organizations, they represent some of our people. Now, the bottom line is, are they unified? Because I'm hearing some rumblings. I can't speak to it. But the bottom line is this, whenever there is separation and division among unions, that is a problem. Mm -hmm. I, I can't sit here and say it's not a problem, but I can tell you this. The Commonwealth of the Bahamas Trade Union Congress are unified yeah. in our position on national issues. Well, we know it is a problem. We've been getting text messages Absolutely. for days now, people saying, well, this is why the That's trade union movement That's is right. in shambles. Yeah. You see, yeah. they can't even come together as That's one. Right. So it is definitely having an impact. That's correct. Well, yeah. it's having an impact because what we say, it seems as though we're talking on two sides of our mouth. Yeah. If you say unify, and because it doesn't go your way, you decide, well, you're going to take up your marbles and run home and, and, and break up the game. That don't make no sense to me. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, I can't speak to it. I don't know yeah. why. I, I, I have friends on both sides of the divide, uh, NCTUB and this new organization mm -hmm. who we know. I don't know why the separation, but I do know this. The Commonwealth of the Bahamas Trade Union Congress is unified. Okay. All right. um, as we wait, um, Obi Ferguson and Kyle Wilson, uh, we've got some calls coming in and some interesting text messages here. Um, let's take this call first, and then we'll get to the text. Uh, good morning, caller. You're on Morning Glen Business. Hello. Hi, good morning. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, <clears throat> good, 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 good morning to the unionist, um, uh, Mr. Martin. Try just in case, uh, and just in case you don't be able to come on tomorrow, you don't do it tomorrow. You remember you had Mr. Bastian, Bastian from the gas company, the, the petroleum industry, a couple of weeks ago? Yes. 
And he was saying that they having some favorable meeting with Prime Minister Davis, and he thinks things is going to be working for the for for those business person. That but was last that. week, Friday on, on Guardian News, I believe it was reported that the Minister of Economics, Michael Alkides, was saying whatever that is doing, they promising the petroleum owners they won't be able to do it. Yes. Well, I ain't here no fall up Monday come. Not, no new. No one saying <clears throat> maybe you could do some research. Well, Sorry, not we said, follow up on it and bring us the answer. Let's see what yeah. Mr. Basti yeah. is saying now. If, he, if he's disappointed or what, or what their plan is, what they could do. Uh, Mr. Manes. Yes, sir. Well, uh, before you go on, I mean, uh, the minister, Halkis, was on this show, and he said yeah, they won't be able to do all the things they asked for, but they're still working on something and that we would hear soon what it was. When you say drive, what and you think he mean when you say, uh, or what you mean drive when you tell me, say, boy, can you mean they still talking or something happening? He, it, he made it sound like they, they're still working talking. on something. Uh, oh, still I, I don't know if he's talking to the. Uh, I'd be surprised. I, I mean, I'd like to know what Mr. 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 Bastian and the gas company is them saying because I think they disappointed. Yeah. They thought I don't know what they was expecting. No, they are just going. Who work in, 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 before ministry? Find out well, what they want the government. What could the government do? How could they bring down the cost for the for the drivers? That's why I asked him if we should go electric. Electric when he was on your show, Mr. Manens. Yes, sir. Good morning. Happy New Year and everything. I ain't talked to you for a long time. It's always a pleasure to, to hear you, my brother. Yeah, thank God that you to take time out before and allow me as a blind person. And I know that I'm the only disabled person. You might have catered to care me for breakfast and, you know, I mean, for dinner and stuff like that and well, all that you stuff. You know, now I understand you could help me with some breakfast yeah, from time to time. Yeah, I could help you, my thanks. I only tell you thanks for it. You <laughs> it's know, my pleasure. And, it's and, my and, pleasure, and Papa. You know that. We come from, You're my friend, my brother. Huh? You're my friend. Oh, you okay. are my friend. Um, I hear that. Yes. Listen, I look disappointed with Mr. Ferguson. Okay. I know you and Mr. Ferguson for many years also. He'll be here shortly. Yeah, listen, though, you could tell him this way. He could hear it. See, that hear me on the talk show with these couple of days. Go ahead. When I hear him last week on the radio talking, Yes. that was distasteful and a big disgrace. I didn't expect that of him. Okay. He sounded more like a divider. He was talking division. In the union, what I learned from you guys, then that's why I fight for union. Doesn't matter, TUCNG, all is solidarity forever. Which now, I, which, uh, which Ferguson are you speaking of? The leader, sir, Mr. Ferguson, okay, didn't yeah. I say that? Oh, okay, yeah. all right, all right. Listen, because I, there's another Ferguson. I, I no, I'm talking about the leader, Obi Ferguson. He was saying, if you ain't for me, I ain't for you, reminding the rest of the unions, like Mr. Kingsley Ferguson, them, who was the part of Public Service Union, yeah. uh, who used to be with the NTCU, that, you know, you all didn't come to the, the MOU right, when, when, when the, form, uh, uh, the, the, the present government now, the tell you all to come, so you shouldn't be making all like, that. That sounds so stupid, I expect. All right, let's get Obi Ferguson. He's right here right now. He's going to respond to that. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. That was going to be one of our questions. Obi Ferguson, good morning, sir. Good morning. I only see you once a year these days yeah. uh, around Labor Day. But anyway, great to see you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Kyle Wilson, welcome to the show. Great pleasure to have you with us. Pleasure. All right, let's get your mics up there. Um, all right, so the caller is bringing it up. And that was going to be one of our questions, of course. Uh, the right. comment you made uh, last week, if you didn't sign the MOU, I'm paraphrasing. You could tell us what you meant exactly. If you didn't sign the MOU, then basically, I mean, what would you expect? Um, but you tell us what you meant, and uh, for the people, who, many people are like, wow, wow, what are you saying here? Right. Explain yourself. Yeah, quite frankly, I, I heard uh, that remark, but that's certainly not what I said. My, mm -hmm. my concern was that um, the benefits of the MOU applies to all Bahamians. Mm -hmm. Only point we were trying to make, if you're relying on a document to which you denounce, and you indicate you're not a part of. Mm -hmm. You cannot rely on that document. We ought not rely on that document to indicate whether or not um, there's been a breach. Because, you know, you see, what you need to understand clearly, the Bahamian, the Bahamian workers, whether they're in a union or they're outside of the union, there's very little we can do and negotiate that would exclude them because the law doesn't only relate to unions or bargaining union. Mm -hmm. The law relates to all workers in the Bahamas. And the only point I was making was that um, if you and I sign a contract um, and we are the only two that signed the contract, it's only you or me can rely on that contract to determine whether or not there's a breach. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the benefits for all workers in the Bahamas. 
because Kyle has an agreement with BBL. Does that apply to all the workers in the Bahamas? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean, though, that all the workers are not entitled to be properly represented and be properly compensated. That, that, that was the context in which it was used. Because some people were taking it that way. It sounded like, yeah, I yes, vote for I, I these folks that I don't yeah, deserve in, to yes, get yes. rights. But yeah, that's no, not what you no, mean. No, no, certainly. I mean, that, that goes against um, my very existence because um, much of my work, to a great extent, involved people, uh, workers who are not in the union. Because mm -hmm. if they're in the union, they go to the union leader and they, they resolve the differences in that manner. The, the workers that I basically normally represent to a great extent are those workers who are not in the union, who has no one to represent them. Mm -hmm. So there, there, there was never an intention to, to do that. In any event, as a matter of <laughs> being the president of the trade union, the Congress, in any event, mm -hmm. it, it, that would be very difficult for me to, to say mm -hmm. and, and, and mean it. So there, there's, no, there's, no, there's no truth to it. There's no accuracy to that. Yeah. All right. So how, how do you think things are going with the new administration? Um, um, the, are, you, are you encouraged by what you're seeing so far? Are they responding to union concerns or workers' concerns, labor matters? Yeah, I am very, very, um, very happy. Um, we have some disappointments, but I mean, not necessarily disappointment, but things that have not been completed. But let me say to you, um, you know, I met with the prime minister as recently as yesterday. And um, prior to um, June, July date, we couldn't get a meeting with the former prime minister. So um, if you're telling me we have met with the, prime, the present prime minister, at least this would have made my fourth time uh, with him wow. on behalf of workers. And um, some of my colleagues, um, those who are in the TUC and those who are outside of the TUC have met with him. Mm -hmm. He's the prime minister of all Bahamians. He's not just prime minister for TUC or prime minister for whatever. He's the prime minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. He represented 200,000 plus workers. So we have had a very progressive situation. For example, one fundamental change, I think the prime minister ought to be given and his government ought to be given credit for is the um, we were able to separate the 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 minister the director of labor and the registrar of trade unions. Mm -hmm. Ever since its existence, there was a conflict there because you can't be responsible for registering the unions and also be responsible for mon monitoring exactly what you registered. Mm. So we were able to get that change. Van der Lini, um, is now the registrar of trade unions. And that's all happened since September? It's all happened yeah. since wow. September, okay. yeah. So, so Kyle, Kyle agreement, industrial agreement, I mean, he'll, he'll deal with that. But again, that, that was a major contentious mm -hmm. point. Since then, that agreement has, in fact, been registered. The union in Grand Bahama, um, the uh, educators' union in Grand Bahama, um, Mrs. Major, um, she's been trying around the clock to get it registered. That union, as of April 1st, that union has been registered. The, the, the government has made a public announcement as to increases uh, for workers despite the state of the economy. And we said to the government, look, you know, you for me, um, I for you, if you are interested in the Bahamian workers, we are with you. It's not a political thing. We are here to represent working people. That's what we're here for. Those in the union, I have a, a cadre of men and women in the Trade Union Congress. And um, I said publicly, I'm a very privileged man to have been given the opportunity to lead this care of people. All the doctors, all of the doctors are under the supervision of the TUC. Wow. All of the nurses in the Bahamas are under the supervision of the TUC. All of the air traffic controllers are under the auspices of the TUC. All of the power company, both unions, are part of. So we, we are not, all of the vendors in our community, Iraqi, you know, you name it, mm -hmm. they're all under the auspices of the TUC. We have a very progressive organization, as you know. I mean, 
We're talking about going back from 1977, the 14th of March. That was the first industrial, uh, first memorandum of understanding that was reached between the trade union Congress and the government. That was signed by Sir Lyndon Pinnon and uh, A.D. Hanna, um, the Deputy Prime Minister A.D. Hanna, Honorable A.D. Hanna, and uh, the Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram. He was the signature to that, account, to that uh, document. So what, what I'm saying, you, you, we're not just a fly-by-night organization. We, we've been around. We've gotten some commitments from the government, the House of Labor, we hope will be revamped and remodeled. And I'm certain Fred probably may have mentioned that before I came on. But that building is going to be revamped. It's, we're going to try to have it ready for the 50th anniversary of our country. We, look, we are, in, we are into doing things for working people. Mm -hmm. We introduced in the Memorandum of Understanding, this is where it came from, we introduced the min, uh, minimum wage to living wage. That's where it came from. We signed off on that. Mm -hmm. And this government has gone on record indicating that they are for a living wage, not a minimum wage. So there's some basic things. Some of the agreements are now moving forward, not as fast as we would like for them to be, but we are negotiating. We have one or two things we tr we try to sort out. And we're going to try to sort it out outside of the press, to be honest with you, because it become controversial. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, are, we, are, we are better off. Let's put it like that. The question in America was, are you better off today than you were? <laughs> <laughs> and I, don't think, and I don't think realistically there was a trade union leader, if they really want to be um, realistic. I mean, there's some things I want done myself. Mm-hmm. But I can go through a series of things um, that we would have done with this government since they became the government. Yeah. And that is not to suggest, mind you, that we don't have issues. That, don't, that do not suggest that we wouldn't take issues. That's not the point. Mm -hmm. What we're saying, though, in life, you've got to be honest with yourself first. And then you'll be honest with people. You have to, you have to speak truth to power. When you see something happening, I mean, like take uh, uh, the, the, the the vendors on Pirates Island. We spoke. Um, we spoke to the deputy prime minister. He's the minister of tourism. No, what has happened there? Zero. Mm -hmm. So, so how could still you still an issue of concern? It's still an issue of concern. Yeah. How could mm -hmm. you have? How could you have a tourist going in a, in a bush to release themselves? Mm -hmm. And we we are we are we are we are talking about tourism. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I one of the things uh, Fred will tell you. I, I'm putting my speech my national speech, I told them I have a bachelor's degree in tourism. Mm. I have a bachelor's degree in tourism. So I know something about tourism, not only from an academic standpoint, but I used to be assistant manager at Paris Island. Mm -hmm. So I am very familiar with what is going on. But I, I am prepared to say, without any doubt, that the labor movement Certainly, let me speak for the TUC. Right. <laughs> <laughs> let me speak for the TUC. Mm -hmm. For the very first time, we are now at the ILO, as I speak. The government has designated the Trade Union Congress as the delegate in, uh, in, in Geneva. We have sent three persons there, one from uh, the Customs and Immigration Union as the Secretary General and the President of the um, uh, Air Traffic Controller, and uh, Edna Rule, who's the treasurer for the Commonwealth Bahamas Trade Union Congress. They are the official delegates in Geneva. So that's been a fundamental change. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, sounding much uh, <laughs> more positive than, than in years past. Yeah, yeah, um, Kyle Wilson is the first time you've been on the show. Welcome. Uh, it's great a pleasure to, have to be here this morning. Um, uh, we've seen you in the press over the past few months saying a lot, um, sounding some alarms about um, what's going on at uh, BPL. But where, where do things stand now, with the, at least with the BEWU and BPL, BC? Um, things are looking quite up, to say the most part. Um, since there has been a turnaround in the new administration, the prime minister has given word direct even to me mm -hmm. that it's ever an issue. You know to come and see. You don't have to take it to the streets. You don't have to carry on by you don't have to be the monster. Just come and see me, and we can fix things up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I would just like to, you know, just give honor and glory to God um, for allowing persons such like Obi Ferguson and Fred Munnings and these people. You know, you see them on TV. Growing up, I see these people, and to be in their presence, it's a good feeling. Wow. You know, it's, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm a, a big burger. You know, sometimes you get amongst these people, but, you know, you're in awe. 
But, you know, um, these people are like father figures to me in the labor movement. Um, they've really been helpful. Um, you know, they, they're willing to chastise me when I'm out of order sometimes and, you know, help keep me in line and help keep me in a straight path. But really and truly, um, when I first started, um, when I was elected, my co- we were part of the of a different Congress. Mm-hmm. Um, but most people would think I was a part of the TUC because the first, le- the first call, let me just say this, the first call, election night, I got a call. Someone said, um, yeah, here's the phone. And I said, hello? Uh, yes, um, this is uh, uh, Philip Brave Davis here. Just called to congratulate you on your victory. Wow. Was, you know, and I, you know, I didn't really have a, a dialogue with him like that, but I felt excited that he recognized me. Um, a, few, a few days later, I get a letter um, from Mr. Obi Ferguson uh, welcoming me into the labor movement. Um, at that time, the Congress that I was a part of, they didn't even they didn't even recognize me yet. And so, Mr. Ferguson would call me, he would check up on me. Um, you know, he would say, "Is everything going good? If you need any help, my number is here. You can dial me up." Um, you know, and I had a lot of struggles. And one day, I went to his office. Um, I was there so long, I I I, I sort of fell asleep. So he put his hand on my shoulder, and he woke me up. And he said, "Listen, I can see you stressed out. You know," mm. he said, "But guess what?" Those days of stress are over, man. I got your back. And and from that day on, it, it's been like a father-son relationship um, between me and him. Um, if, I, if he doesn't see me for a date, that phone is going to ring. Where you is? I ain't see you today. What oh. happened? Mm-hmm. You know? And I, I appreciate that. It shows that he cares. He cares about people. I see it daily. Mm-hmm. Um, I see it daily in his giving. I see it daily in the amount of people that come to his office for help, um, the people that come for advice. Um, many people that pull on him daily, and he's trying to make himself available for everybody. So it's not just about me or anybody, but like you said, the average person in the street is not a part of a union who needs help. A lot of these people come to him. Mm. They can't even afford to pay. He's a QC. But mm-hmm. he still says, you know what? Let me hear your concern. Let's see how we can help. Excellent. Yeah. We're getting some tech, uh, messages about that. We'll bring that up in a bit. All right. So you're feeling good, but, but what about... BPL, how are things looking there? We've, some people have noted have noted that the power seems to be going off a little more frequently. Well, well, if you notice, um, you know, um, about a year ago plus, um, when we had demonstrations, I had some press releases. I would have spoken prophetically um, to what was to come. Mm-mm. You know, a lot of people didn't realize. They think I was just an angry guy out there just talking to make noise. But I told the Bayman people, expect these things to happen. You see... The bridge for tomorrow must be built today. Mm -hmm. And if we didn't build that bridge yesterday, we can't expect to have a bridge to cross today. So the power outages that we're facing today was because of an inept leadership of people who didn't see or foresee what's to come. Okay, we're reopening again. It's going to be more power. We're bringing in more resorts. We're adding on this. We're adding on that. Um, What we're doing, we're not even upgrading. There was everyone doesn't want to get into the transmission and distribution because that's not the sexy part. That's not where the money is, right? But we're dealing with a 1980-plus um, antiquated system that mm-hmm. needs to be upgraded. You know, we can't even offer power to the vendors at Podesky Dock. Um, so many other places we're not offering power to. Um, right now, um, we talk about solarizing, and we, but... Where's the solar? Where's, where, let's say, you know what, Podesky Doc, we're going to make you an example of what clean and green energy is. Mm-hmm. We're going to solarize you. We're going to do water um, power transfer, right, um, using the tide. We're going to do these things. And we're going to show the Bahamian people. I even said, even at BPL, they don't even drive electric cars. Mm-hmm. We're a power company. And they drive V8 gas hogs and SUVs. You mean the big trucks? The, yeah. The, the, yeah. But now, I'm talking about even executives. You see a couple, but no. Yeah. No, no they just boy. started um, for the like the line workers. Yeah. They just started getting into that. But I think we should be examples of yeah. what we preach. Mm-hmm. You know, we should start um, showing how you save money more. Um, we should try to educate people. Um, I mean, even to do so is going to cost the company probably at the bottom end. But it's going to help the Bahamian people because right now yeah. it's a tough time money-wise. And so... I would say to the Bahamian people, listen, you don't have to worry about any aspect of the union because I've never engaged in any industrial action where I would have gone and hurt the Bahamian people or intentionally sabotage or power outage. 
And when I go home, I want my power on too. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to ever worry about the union engaging in that type of action because I'm never going to hold the Bahamian people hostage for anything between me and management. I'm going to hold management hostage. I'm going to beat that drum until they get rid of that cancel or that person who I feel is not effective or engaging in industrial harmony. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's good. Good to hear that. Um, we're going to hold you to that, yeah. Kai Wilson. Thank you very much for putting a lot of people at ease there. But you do notice a, a change in the mindset? Is there, there a gradually? There's, there's a total change yep. in the mindset of everything. There's a total change in the way things are happening. And I told people just to give the litmus test. I've seen the new chairman in one week more than I've spent. I've seen the former chairman hmm. in about two plus years. Wow. Um, the new CEO, like I said, he is a product of BPL. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've been um, acclimating for is the return of the apprenticeship program. And I'm going to hold the prime minister accountable to that because he promised me uh, when he's in opposition that he himself was once an apprentice and look where he is today. Wow. And with BPL, you can imagine the CEO was once a part of the training program. The COOs at BPL were once a part of the training program. Excellent. Some of the directors are once part of the training program. The past five union presidents were past a part of BPL's training programs. All of the out island managers are part of BPL's training programs. And that is where we lost the mark. You see, because we went away from succession training. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So you can't have no success without succession. So we went mm. away from succession leadership to just taking friends, family, and lovers and plugging them into places they didn't deserve to be. Mm. And that's why the company failed. But when you have succession persons who come up, okay, let me give you an example. Sterling Moss, he started as an APO, mm -hmm. but he's now a director, right? And so it gives hope to the average working dog. I be diligent. If I work hard, if I study, if I go through these programs, mm -hmm. I could make it to CEO or director. Yeah. And so we went away from that, and that destroyed the morale of the workers. They took away the apprenticeship program. I mean, it's like when you talk about in the Bible, um, I think Nehemiah rebuilding the wall. I want to see that wall of the apprenticeship. I'm going to be on that wall rebuilding to see that apprenticeship program brought mm. back. I guess they said, you know what? That program created too many union leaders. We have to cut that out. <laughs> right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, we're, we're hoping. We're all rooting for BPL. We really, really are. Thank you. And so we, we needed to succeed. All right. Um, Obi Ferguson, you said this earlier about yeah. the, the government promising, you know, looking at a livable wage. And we were hearing... Um, increases for many workers, but people are saying, well, yeah, it sounds good, but where are we getting this money from? How is this going to work in the long term? Is this going to come back to bite us? Um, what do you say to people who are worried that this is this is the, that type of budget that has got a lot of a lot of stuff waiting in the shadows behind it? Right. I think um, if you listen very carefully to the Prime Minister's uh, remarks and his utterances, where the money coming from, I think he, he did a fantastic job in reaching a balance because the economy is not in a position to put taxes on the average man. As a matter of fact, he has reduced taxes in some instances. So um, I, I, you know, during the pandemic, on my way from my house to my office, I remember vividly um, on Bay Street, when I looked on the back, I didn't see any other cars. It's just, I was yeah. just on, alone. But when I got up by, almost up by the um, House of Assembly, I saw a rat. One rat <laughs> that <laughs> ran across the road, right? And, um, you know... Um, was that a coincidence, or what, what do you think? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You know, the, the, the point I'm making, right, God is good. And I, I am a strong believer in, in God. And and the other day I was coming out of my office, and I mean, I must have stopped at least about three or four times to let the tourists pass. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, um, I'm not overly emotional about certain things, but when I can see Bahamians going to work in the morning, you know, picking up the kids, wearing the mask, following the protocol, you know, that gives me hope. And again, in my speech, my neighborhood speech, I made reference to 
this country, I can recall as a, as a young boy at the time, you can, you can go to about 50 nightclubs. 50, I said, mm -hmm. in the Bahamas, from the 60s, the, okay. the, the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. You go in there, you have a bartender, a bar manager, a restaurant manager. These people working. The tourists, I mean, Pink Pussycat Club, I can recall, you can hardly get in that joint. Mm. Today, we don't have one nightclub catering to the Bahamian public, giving the tourists the culture of the Bahamas. Right. And, 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 but John, that, that, that's my difficulty I'm having. Yeah. We say we are. You know, Freddie's always talking. Yeah, we say wow. we are promoting. <laughs> we say we are promoting tourism. But what the, the tourists come here to look, to be here and enjoy and experience the Bahamian situation. Mm -hmm. You cannot get culture in your country. If you don't have culture in your country, and if you don't exhibit that, so when the boat comes here, five miles away from Nassau, they should shut down. Mm -hmm. That's the way it used to be. That's the way it is in, in Bermuda. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying, um, I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very much concerned, I'm very much concerned about, about that because yeah. if tourism is gonna be what it's supposed to be, look at the taxi drivers. I mean, if you have 50 night gloves, Ronnie Butler, Freddie Old Man, and, 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 and them. Mm -hmm. When you, they, they, they go there, they have dinner. I remember King Eric, King Eric had a dinner and, and a show. Yeah. When you so go this down, is saying we, there are opportunities out there that we could be, yes, we could make this money. We could make We really could, but we we're could. just sitting, we, and, and we're sitting going, on this and, potential. And what, exactly. And I find it difficult that those people who are in tourism, I just I find it difficult that they they they're doing the same thing mm -hmm. over and over and over and they expect different results. That ain't gonna work. Yeah, yeah. simple. We got a lot of calls coming in. Uh, calls, you know, you've been waiting for a while. Um, hope you're still there. Let's take them. Good morning, call. You're on the air. Uh, this this is a good morning for some, but the others. This is a, a deprived day, you know. And and, and I put it to to, to, to Mr. Uh, Ferguson. That, that, that the people, that the workers that need this livable wage, right, you know, they, they, they are ununionized, you know, and, and, and the people who are unionized are their employers, many of them, the middle class, you know, and, and, and to, to, to the, uh, the, the, the uh, electrical man, right, he's talking about uh, 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 electrifying uh, restaurant, right, and, and, and bar vendors on an extensive dock that is needed. Docks are for boat landing and not restaurants and bar. They need to relocate them, put them on Bay Street east of, uh, what you call it, on uh, east of, 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 of East Street, you know, but take them off that dock that is needed for the fishermen that don't have how can afford uh, what you call it a a, a, a a trailer for a boat or something? I you know I know people in the ghetto that didn't have trailers and say some of them lived on their boat anchored off. You know and thank you sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's take this call. Good morning, call. You're on the air. Are you there? No, okay. All right, so we've got a question like that. That's similar to what the caller is saying um, about um, people who are not unionized um, and um, what can they do. This person is asking if security officers can join a union. We suffer a lot of injustices in this field. Yeah, uh, the, first, the first point is the, uh, the position, certainly, of the Congress is that when we talk to the government about living wage, it really is going to be by legislation it's going to be for all Bahamians. Mm -hmm. That's the fundamental point. The union can negotiate more than what the law says because the act says that. But for the purposes of the Bahamians who are not in the union or in a union, it would have no effect because it will, have, it will be enacted. It will be legislation. The Employment Act would be amended to include a number of things. For an example... In, in, in our view, gratuity, gratuity ought to be a part of wage. Mm -hmm. Because right now, the average worker is paying 9.8%, 9.6, 9.8% of the gratuity for national insurance. And one of the definitions 
that I used when I went to Privy Council was that national insurance was evidence, payment of national insurance was evidence of unemployment. Employment. Mm -hmm. But still in the Bahamas, if you look at the law in the Bahamas, it says um, wage does not include um, gratuity and tips. Right. Well, you, you have to make up your mind. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you have the worker paying 9.8% and you terminate the worker and you're only paying the worker, say, uh, $200 or $210 basic pay, and the worker is getting gratuity for the last 15, 20 years, so averaging about 450 why wouldn't 450 plus 200 come out to 600 and something, right, mm -hmm. if you're terminating them or if they've been made redundant? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So mm -hmm. we, that, that, that's an issue. That's an issue we have. To, other than that, the government should refund the, the, the workers to 9.8% because mm -hmm. they're paying the 9.8% because of them being an employee, and they're treating it as though it's wages. But when time comes for termination, right. they only pay them on the basis of the 210. Very interesting. Yeah, and that, yeah. That, that's, that's, not, that's not right. Yeah. So the legislation, we, we're putting in, we, we obviously would have supported the government and the employers as well because I'm saying it's going to be a three-way discussion. Uh, we would bring these points and make these points as straightly as we possibly can. And if you are no, not currently represented by someone, what, what can you do? I remember there was a union for all workers. What yeah, was there, that is, one? there is a general workers right. union mm -hmm. in the Bahamas. It's, it's, um, it's headed up by Mr. Sands, uh, Mr. Beckford, and uh, Mr. Miller, and, and those. They And I happen to be the, the, the negotiator with them with BAIC and, and uh, BTVI. So yes, and they can join that union, and uh, they don't need to go through the expense of forming a union. Mm -hmm. That union exists. All they need to come in, pay the requisite money, find the application form, and they will be covered. And I agree with the gentleman, the security officers are really badly treated <coughs> uh, in our country. Mm -hmm. um, for that, do you need to have the 50 plus 1% also? No, to, no. No. You can, in, as an individual, as an join indi that yes, union? Yes, you can join oh, that okay. union, yes. Ah, wonderful. Yes. Somebody's saying here, um, what about the defense force? No one checks for these guys. Anybody? Well, they, they can do precisely what the uh, police officers would have done. An association. An association. Mm -hmm. It has the same effect, mm -hmm. uh, but there's, there's some limitation. But in terms of negotiation, they can form uh, an association. Mm -hmm. No problem. Okay. Right. Let's take another call. Good morning, call. You're on the air. How you doing? Doing well. Good morning to you guys as well. Good morning. So I, I was kind of in and out listening to the show, and I'd like to first say that I really applaud the concept as well as the good work the unions have been doing over the years. I myself was a union member way back in the day when I worked as a busboy. Yes. And, you know, so for me, uh, the business I'm in now, I the advantage or the benefit of, of being a part of a union. However, I have, you know, paid attention to the activities of the union over the years, just kind of, you know, from a distance. And my question to your representatives in there is, the union representatives in there, is this. Um, it seems like a bit of an unfortunate situation that the union has a characteristic very similar to regular business where it's very easy to get the monies in. They collect their monies without fail, on time, every time the workers are paid. However, you know, I guess it's kind of natural that resolving grievances and that kind of thing, you know, takes more time. I wanted to ask them, what assurances can they give the, their workers, as well as the Bahamian population, that they are as aggressively as possible fighting these battles on the workers' behalf because, and the reason I ask is because it just seems, like I said, that, you know, the money comes out very quickly. Uh, the union has a lot of money, it seems. I could be wrong, but it seems like the union has a lot of money and has a lot of resources available to it. But I'm not quite sure that I see that same level of gusto in the fight to defend people of these issues. And the reason, I, you know, I can back that because I worked at a company here that the union was trying to, and I was very interested in being a part of it at the time, but it just seemed as if, you know, there was a good fight to get in there, but I was concerned that, you know, would the benefit coming to me as an employee at that time 
been have been commensurate with hey I'm paying every every time I get paid with with all assurance. So I'd I'd like to hang up and listen to their answer, please. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Well, the, the first point is I I agree with the caller that the unions traditionally are paid before he gets his check because we have a check off system and the check off system wants the worker works and um, he's collecting his check, um, his dues are deducted. He signed off for that. In the absence of that, where the worker has 50, the union has 50 plus 1% in that establishment, the dues are deducted, um, the dues are deducted um, automatically. Mm -hmm. And that is normally done by a voting process. The membership would participate in that process and we call that agency, um, agency shop process. But in terms of uh, representation, I can only speak for the I can only speak for the trade union Congress. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I went to Privy Council for a worker who could not even pay my way to Miami. Wow. So, and um, that speaks, in my view, our commitment to the the little man. He's not in a union. He's not a part of no union. He was an average Bahamian. But he had a case. I thought the case was a justifiable case. I went to the Supreme Court. I won the case at the Supreme Court. Uh, the party uh, appealed it to the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal overturned the Supreme Court ruling. Mm -hmm. I took the case to the Privy Council, and the Privy Council ruled in favor of that young man. So uh, that speaks volume. If you look at Sanders Hotel, for an example, there's 600 workers. Again, they couldn't afford uh, to go to London. Um, I took the case on, um, and I succeeded in London. Uh, the government, the then government, hired a Queen's Council to work with Sandals against the 600 workers. Mm. In addition to that, the Sandals uh, hired another local Queen's Council and another lawyer, and we went to London and we succeeded. So uh, I just trying to say this. So you, you, know. you are our David. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I just want to make the point to the caller mm -hmm. to understand. And every day, every day, we in, either in the court or in the tribunal, sometimes it's a little delay yeah. because the system gets clogged. But rest assured that once a worker has a case, mm -hmm. no matter who mm -hmm. say what, we take that case and we do what we have to do. And we try to, and like, like Carl says, the question about money, even though you know the, you have to be properly retained, et cetera, the, the effort of the Senate and the Congress, we try to make sure that we properly represent the Bohemian worker. That, that's a, not to just make a bunch of noise and carry on, because that ain't gonna help the worker. The worker want results. People want, if you go to court, they want you to do the best that you can. You're not going to win every case. That's a given. But the point is, representation is critical. Yeah. And we make sure we make that a, a reality. And just my last point here, what we have done in the Trade Union Congress for, for the last almost 20 years now, we have uh, introduced a training program, a training program. Just recently, we had graduation where these people are trained how to deal with trade disputes. They go to the labor board. They, we call, they are now classified as labor advocates, and they're representing workers. I know a young man by the name of Mr. L. McKinney. He used to work at my office. He has his own office. He has a, a, a practice, a full practice representing the little man. So um, maybe we, we don't advertise it the way we ought to, because we don't want it to be used to be something like uh, we're taking advantage of the situation. We're into that. Mm -hmm. We're into trying to see if we can get some things done for the Bahamian workers. Yeah. So whenever we speak, we only talk for the unions. That we talk for Everybody. all Bahamians. All right, we're running out of time. Um, we already spoke to Freddie about tomorrow with yes. the rain possible, right. but he says it will go on rain or shine. Rain or shine. The per, uh, March. Um, what else can you tell us about tomorrow? And uh, your final words to the workers of the Bahamas as uh, Sir Randall Fox and Labor Day approaches. Well, you know, I um, very quickly I had we had a church service at the Assemblies of God. 
No, Evangelistic, evangelistic Center. Center. And the pastor, pastor Cash. Pastor Cash. I mean, this pastor delivered a message unprecedented, unheard of. It's just incredible. Mm -hmm. He gave us a charge, man. If I could remember anything, he says unity is critical. Unity is critical in the interest of the Bahamian workers. Once you have unity, you can achieve most things. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that to me was what I pull away from that. It was a fantastic, as a matter of fact, I said to Director of Communication, Fred Munnins, I said, we have to take that and memorize, memorize that because it's important for the workers. Workers need to hear it. Mm -hmm. um, tomorrow, uh, we will have a nice little get together and uh, uh, we look for you. Um, Sean, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we look for you yeah. to, to be down there. We'll have some good, um, uh, Ali, Ali is, who is the coordinator for the Labor Day. He's a good baker. Kyle, uh, Kyle can cook better than most people that I know. Oh, yeah? Yeah, well, Kyle is a very good cook. So um, you can sure come down there and have fun. It's a day for all behemoths. It doesn't matter whether you're in a union. It doesn't matter whether, you, whether you're not in the union. It doesn't matter what political party you're in. Those things are not an important issue for us. So mm -hmm. we look forward for a great day. And you know, last Labor Day, we couldn't even march. Right. But now, couldn't even uh, have a motorcade. We couldn't even have a motorcade. My goodness. <laughs> uh, now, but today, uh, things have changed. Yeah. Things have changed. And, and the workers are now uh, getting their recognition. And we ask them to be a little patient with us because there's some things. We are, yeah, the government has been in power for eight months. Or not quite even eight months, but eight months. And we, there's a lot of things we've been trying to resolve for the last four and a half years. So we're going to continue to work in the interest of workers. We don't really mind who say what. That is not an issue. Mm -hmm. If you come for help, and we can provide help for you, that's the most important thing. Because the fellow who's talking, he only talking. We're trying to make sure we do something for workers. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Gentlemen, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Happy Pleasure. Randall Fox Labor, Labor Day, Day to yes. all of you yes. and to everybody, all the workers in the country. Um, thank you so much. Um, folks, remember, um, again, uh, this is Obi Ferguson, Fred Mungs Jr., and Kyle Wilson. Thank you very much. Yeah, and it, um, that wraps up Labor Week. Laverne, that's it for us. And I just want to remind people to pay attention uh, to the Guardian News Network all day long for the latest on what's happening in the tropics. You must pay attention to that. And um, we're expecting the, that um, heavy rain to start uh, today through the weekend. And um, uh, Morning Blood Business brought to you in part by CFAL, Growing Wealth for Future Generations. Vern, thanks so much. Have a great holiday. Always a pleasure. You too. I look forward to seeing you and Mr. Munnings in Grand Bahama. Yeah, we're going to make we're gonna work, work on this. We're going to make this happen. Um, okay. I'll, I'll be back on Tuesday morning, folks. Tuesday morning. Have a great one. Stay tuned for On the Clock with Aaron Green coming up next. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas.